Hello and welcome to Lord Up, the show where we take someone who hasn't experienced a game or game franchise and walk them through the full story. It is 2023. Happy this New is Year. Happy New Year. Um, as always, I am joined by Neil. Hello. And Chase. Hello. Most of you are probably listening to this because you joined us during the, uh, the, the, the reign of Chase, the era of Chase, when he walked us through all of Kingdom Hearts. I've had to... I've, I've been forced, even... This definitely wasn't me pleading for freedom, but I've, I've handed over the crown. Just to be clear, you're not free of the yoke of Kingdom Hearts. Oh, there God, will be no. more. There are, there are more games coming. <laughs> but with that in mind, uh, the Ray of Chase is over, and now you're in Monty's domain, so We're suck back. it. Fear him, fear him. <laughs> it's, it's almost how it was originally, except we have this one. Hello. <laughs> I've, I've maintained, i would survived mentally through Kingdom Hearts, and I'm still here. And Neil has, in fact, agreed to uh, be the, the narrator, the presenter uh, for a series later this year. If yeah. you're curious what that series is, we have a trailer, which tells you what all of the games are that we're going to be covering in 2023. But for today, what, a, what a tease. Get what those, a tease. get the views up on the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't tell you here. you got to go check that one. <laughs> yeah, right next to our merch store. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are talking about Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So, there's going to be a little bit of a background on this because we covered Metal Gear Solid, sort of, um, before, when Lord Dump was in its early days, you and me, Chase. Neil, you were aware of the Metal Gear franchise. You oh, I've played, played I've played all the mainline games years ago, so I have I've like a pretty broad understanding of the beats of this game, of, of the other games, rather. And I know that this one, I know a couple of the memes. Mm. I obviously know our main character. Uh, and I know it has one of the best names ever in a video game. I think Revengeance is one of the funniest words. Well, I've got it in my notes here and it is underlined red every single time. Um, because it's not it's not real. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to recall my memories of back in the Metal Gear days. I don't remember Cyborgs. You should. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, yes, but not to like this level of like. He's ninety nine percent robot man with an anime boy face. I feel like we have we haven't left Square Enix territory. If well, you give me a f anime boy, this is pure. This is pure Square Enix. Ironically enough, this was created by Platinum Games, not by Hideo Kojima. So Hideo Kojima did the Metal Gear Solid franchise, all was good and well there, and then he decided he wanted to make a ride and spin-off game. So he went off and he started drawing up the story for it, but while they were creating the game, the takeaway was that the battle system they wanted to create, which I'll get into, Kojima and his team had no idea how to do this properly. So they basically went, Platinum, you take it, make it a spectacle fighter. So they just threw it at Platinum Games, and Platinum have created this game. Is and this really fail. set this really set the tone for phenomenal Metal Gear spin-offs not made by Hideo Kojima. It did, It'd yes. Be it nothing was. but nothing but tens. Pachinko because Machine One. Fuck Hideo Kojima. <laughs> what? <laughs> With that in mind. Whoa. Um, yes, we are um, being careful not to swear, Chase. Um, <laughs> it wasn't in the first 15 seconds. No, no, it's not I know the new YouTube rules. I've been following the, the discourse. Yeah, the new, tube, new YouTube rules are a lie based off of what's been demonetized on my channel recently. But um, the, the, we, we are, of course, drinking our adult juices. So if you're joining us, do please um, partake. So first of all, Chase, quick heads up. What do you know about Metal Gear Rising? Anything. Oh, literally nothing. You don't know the memes? You haven't seen any memes from no, it? No, outside of what you told me from back in the the original Metal Gear Lord Up days, mm. I have still not played any Metal Gear game. Totally fair. I have still not followed. I Somehow, despite the amount of games out of Japan that I play, Metal Gear exists in a weird bubble that just never crosses into mine. This and might I be don't the one. Know why. Doesn't, I, I doesn't, really doesn't do quite think. cross over into weeb territory, does it? Somehow not, which I'm still, you... again, shocked given the blatant anime boy on this cover. Can I ask, do you remember who Raiden is? I remember the name. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, I Should I have you... listened to our old Lord Dumps before coming here? No. Maybe. No, you shouldn't have, because I have a previously on to get you up to date. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Also because so the, 
if, if anybody goes back to listen to those old Metal Gear stories, it was very much back in the days when Lordant was like an idiot's basic guide to, and then you, Chase, came in, did Kingdom Hearts, told a proper story, and now that's the format. So, I set the bar. You did. You a set the bar. I'm and so sorry. You gave me more work, so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to jump straight into it. First thing I want to flag to you is because I know that you don't know this. If I were to say the name Quentin Flynn to you, do you know who that is off the top of your head? The name is ringing the softest bell in the back of my head, but I have no clue who the fuck that is. That is Axel's voice actor from the Kingdom Hearts games. <laughs> That's why. The reason why I'm telling you that is because Axel, Quentin Flynn, voices Raiden. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So anytime He's got an Ryan. eye for anime boys. Oh, he does. And, and, and that's in the same voice as Axel, right? Uh, no, it's not. No, oh. no, it's not. It's got like a deep growl. It's, yeah, that's... it's very... Yeah, so, so Metal Gear Rising Revengers. I thought this would be fun to do. A, because we've already covered Metal Gear. Oh, and B, because it's bat shit. And also because it has anime boys for you, Chase. <laughs> it has deep philosophical questions for you, Neil. Why is that me? It has badass ninja cyborgs for me. <laughs> because because you're, you're, you're brooding introspective. <laughs> <laughs> I am sitting here smoking a pipe. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> so, um, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a direct sequel. It is not a spin-off. It is a sequel, canonically, to the events of Metal Gear Solid 4. So, it takes place in 2018, four years after Metal Gear Solid 4. We play as Raiden, once again, um, and the whole game is about him. So, for the sake of clarity, there's no Solid Snake. There's no big boss. They are not in this game. Don't worry about that. Thank God. Okay. So, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to quickly recap Ryan's history to bring you totally up to speed. Because A, I bastardized it when we did the Metal Gear Solid <laughs> ones. And B, there's stuff in there that you do need to know going into this. Okay. So, this is a surface level recap. We've got a lot of ground to cover. So, comments, don't get pissy that I don't mention bloody Olga Gerlukovic or the entire history of the Patriots. We're just going to cover the key stuff so you're fully informed for Revengeance. This should be nice and simple. So. I'm also noticing, just before we... Re vengeance. Mm, yeah. I'm getting. I'm getting some more square vibes here. Yeah, uh, it's not a, like a. Re, it's not like a recall on yeah, like a remake. No on I don't no. believe. I, I think that this is canonically part of the Kingdom Hearts universe, <laughs> and that we never really left. Who knows? Given the end of three, who knows? And this. And this is when I take the mic back. <laughs> and it's my surprise. Lord. It's my lord. I'm still, boys. So let's begin. Liberia, 1990. Right, we're going way back. A six-year-old boy's parents are brutally murdered by the mercenary Solidus Snake, leader of the army of the devil. Solidus sees the violent glint in the boy's eye, the fury, the anger, the bloodlust, and enlists him in his band of child soldiers. You know Metal Gear, they love their child soldiers. That's true. That boy is given the name Jack. After receiving his first taste of battle, Jack tears his way through Liberia's first civil war. In order to keep child soldiers controlled, they would be fed food mixed with gunpowder and be forced to watch Hollywood action films to help keep them focused on killing. <laughs> yeah. It's all brutal. Thanks, America. <laughs> Good job. Um, Jack's time under Solidus Snake's command warps him. For example, on Jack's 10th birthday, Solidus captured at least 10 enemy soldiers. He gifts the prisoners to Jack for his 10th birthday, ordering him to decapitate each one. He calls them birthday candles. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah. Solidus, bad bloke. You might remember Sol Solidus, yeah. Solidus is the villain of Metal Gear Solid 2. I, I, do, I do remember him, Hold yes. brother. So Jack is promoted to captain a couple of days after. As the war carries on, his prowess on the battlefield is so terrifying, bear in mind he's 10, right? So terrifying that he's given the nickname Jack the Ripper, and that name carries out of Liberia, out of Africa, and across the globe. By, by this point, everybody knows who Jack the Ripper is. Every, every soldier, every commander, every government official knows that you do not cross Jack the bloody Ripper, all right? Anyway, we jump ahead. Two. 2009, Metal Gear Solid 2, The Big Shell Incident. So Jack has a girlfriend, Rose. He's no longer in Liberia, he's settled down in the United States of America, and he's working for the legendary infiltration team, Foxhound. And he's even got a fancy new codename. I know name. those guys! You know those guys! I know those guys! So he's even got a fancy new codename, now he's known as Raiden in Foxhound. Or at least, that's what he thinks. 
because he sent off on a mission to infiltrate Big Shell, an oil rig that isn't an oil rig, it's secretly housing a terrifying Metal Gear called Metal Gear Ray. You might remember, Chase, this was the big, really scary Metal Gear, like, this is the big bad boy. It's, it's to this day, it's still, think, it's still think, the coolest one of the series. I don't think Chase found any of the Metal Gears scary, and that was part of your problem with the whole oh, thing, no, wasn't no, it? Oh, no, no, I... Because, again, it it feels like an overcomplicated way to use nukes. Like, <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> Put them, put them in a missile. Put, put them in a missile silo. Hide them. No, <coughs> you give them legs. <laughs> My nukes need legs. They do because they look awesome. Anyway, Kim Jong would love that. So. Big Shell has been taken over by the mercenary group, the Sons of Liberty, led by his old commander, Gasp, Solidus Snake. They've taken the U.S. President James Johnson hostage. Why does he have tentacles? Because they're cool, Chase. <laughs> Is, yeah. is, is, is he, he trying like, to do like a Doc Ock thing here? Uh, yeah, sure. But like with, with two whippy tentacles? Limited budget. Limited budget, yeah. He's also, like, why, again, as as per usual, not, not to like... through the recap. Not to like constantly... Um, I, I, I love games out of Japan. Why in a world filled with guns and when you have tentacles... Does he have a katana? Oh, yes. do you I have did. a problem with is people using swords? I really, I really hope you don't have a problem with swords oh, <laughs> or their efficacy. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love sword combat and I will always be, you know, Frank Herbert or whatever his name is and want to put them in anything that I touch. But I'll never not point out how stupid they are. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? Look, get out of your system now. Put it that way. <laughs> Solid a snake and all of his baddies. They've taken the, the US president, James Johnson, hostage, um, and Raiden needs to rescue him. So that is the plot of Metal Gear Solid 2. Raiden needs to rescue the president from this guy, his old commander, right? Or at least that's what he thinks. We learn that Raiden is just a puppet of an organization called da -da -da -da, The Patriots, a secretive group that's been controlling the world from the shadows. His gasp. Mi yes, gasp. We covered all of this in Metal Gear Solid. Oh no. His mission into Big Shell is just a simulation. He's not working for Foxhound at all, and his memory of being Jack the Ripper in Liberia has been completely wiped. He does not remember Liberia. He does not remember that Solid as Snake is Probably still for the commander. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he remember, like, his combat ability from that? Uh, yes. Okay, that's fine. Like, I, I, I feel like wiping that and yeah. therefore wiping his combat ability would be very counterproductive. Yeah, he works in retail now because he has no <laughs> idea. This whole mission has been staged as part of an experiment called S3, Selection for Societal Sanity. By manipulating information, the Patriots wanted to control people's actions and thoughts. Raiden was just the perfect test subject. Right? Nice and simple. Or at least that's what they think, because Raiden realizes what's happening. He works with the legendary hero Solid Snake and his best friend forever, Otacon, to shut it all down. Also this go. parrot. Also, the parrot is there too. However, we learned that the Patriots are all dead, and they're just a network of artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, I remember that. At the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, Raiden kills Solid as Snake with the katana. They have a big fight. It's really cool. Um, he walks off into the sunset. Happy ending for all. Hooray. Okay? So that's nice. the end of Metal Gear Solid 2. We're all happy. We're all caught up. Anyway, let's talk about 2012. <laughs> Raiden and Rose, this is Rose, have settled down together and are living a peaceful, quiet life. But Raiden's memories of Liberia begin to resurface all that trauma. Gasp. Seeing himself as Jack the Ripper, he falls into a downward spiral, post-traumatic stress takes over, and their relationship completely falls apart. He Aww. sees himself as nothing but a beast for the battlefield. Being a soldier, he finds comfort in war and joins up with the Paradise Lost Army. This all happens off screen. This is purely filled in through codex calls. So he joins up with the Paradise Lost Army, a militia group secretly working to take down the Patriots. While with them, he goes on a mission to Area 51 where he rescues this girl. Oh my God, wait, I remember this. I got really pissed off in the last one because by the end of the game, for all the hype the Patriots had, we only killed like three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for our dear podcast viewers, we're, we're looking at an image of, I think, a 10-year-old Jack in, like, a maid outfit. No, no, that's Sonny. Oh, okay. <laughs> it does look like a young Raiden um, with egg on their head. Yeah. Um, and presumably Rose. No, that's Naomi Campbell. Oh, Naomi Campbell. Weird reaction facing with, like, her tongue kind of out in the back. I'm very confused. This is... Well, Sonny tried to flip the egg, it landed on her head, and Naomi Camby's like, oh no! <laughs> it's just a scene in the game. One of the best bits of writing, one of the best, uh, I mean, well, best reviewed games in terms of writing, isn't it? <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> sure. So, Raiden goes to Area 51, right, and he rescues Sonny. Sonny was captured by the Patriots at birth. 
doesn't matter who her parents are, honestly, I'm not going to get into it, it's a whole thing, right? All you need to know is this little girl was captured by the Patriots at birth, and they have been kind of raising her. She was a total child prodigy because the Patriots were grooming a wee genius, essentially. They were, she, she is an absolute genius. So you're going to learn more about so Sonny. So she's Jack 2.0? No, Jack. Jack wasn't a, isn't a genius. Jack's just a badass on the battlefield. Okay, D- a smart brains, brains genius. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Don't stress too much about Sonny. It's just this is just something he does. He rescues this little girl who's been groomed by the Patriots to be a technical genius. Okay, cool. So Raiden and Sonny form a real bond during their escape, and after rescuing her, he drops her off with Solid Snake and Otacon so they can raise her away from the Patriots' prying eyes. You re- might remember Metal Gear Solid. There's lots of moments where it's like her two dads. Solid Snake and Otacon, and they're trying to get Sunny deprogrammed and help her out. Oh, I do remember. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. However, barely a few months after rescuing Sunny, the Patriots get their hands on Raiden. They capture him as revenge. They forced him to undergo heavy cybernetic experimentation, turning him into a badass cyborg ninja. But they don't realize what they've created, and Raiden breaks free of their control almost immediately, returning to Paradise Lost stronger, faster, but traumatized. You should remember this, because this is Metal Gear Solid. He appears, and he's suddenly just a cyborg now. And Solid Snake's like, what? Oh! (laughs) Mm. I do remember that! So now we jump into properly Metal Gear Solid 4. This is now what happens in that game. So Metal Gear Solid 4. Okay. War has changed. It's now on PlayStation 3. What do you mean? (laughs) War war never changes. No, not according to Fallout, but you you made this joke when we did the Metal Gear one. (laughs) (laughs) The world's economy is now a war economy. This is really important. It's a war economy, relying on continuous civil wars fought by PMCs, known as private military companies, which outnumber government military forces. So a bunch of little mer- pockets of mercenaries, if they all join together, they could take over the world. Basically. Can you imagine if that happened in the real world? Woofed. <laughs> and, and basically now governments are leasing out dirty work to these private mercenary companies, but it's very common. It's not a rare occurrence. It happens weekly. You know, they're f- these mercenaries are fighting wars on behalf of governments now, rather than national armies like the US military or the UK military. Soldiers are equipped with nanomachines that monitor and enhance their performance on the battlefield, controlled by a vast artificial intelligence network known as the Sons of the Patriots. It's basically the Patriots, the the Sons of the Patriots is this AI system that makes up the Patriots. But the Patriots was an AI system. Uh, Yeah, don't worry about it. So essentially, (laughs) what matters is the Patriots have essentially taken over the world, right? So bad, bad stuff ahead. Solid Snake and Otacon have been raising Sunny, cultivating her genius, but treating her well. Good dads, look at them go, having a grand old time. (laughs) Raiden eventually joins the team, and Snake is shocked to see his old friend is in his new body. Raiden does some cool flips and kicks, and the pair eventually fight a Metal Gear Ray together. There you go, Metal Gear Ray, back in action. Yep, the coolest one, the The absolute kick ass. During the fight, Raiden's arms get trapped under some rubble, so he cut them off to escape, meaning he can come back later and kill stuff with the sword between his teeth. It's good stuff. It's really cool. <laughs> Love it, right? <laughs> it cool? I also feel like, you know, th- they're cyborg arms. It doesn't really, you know, hurt him to kind of re- replace him later. Absolutely. Yeah, Straight he's, up, he's absolutely. Just a robot man. So all of this happens. This is all the end of the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, right? So he comes back, he kills stuff with his teeth. It's awesome. Uh, but regardless, together with their band of heroes, he helps to save the day. Sonny, so you might remember this moment. Oh. The, 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 yeah, oh. the long crawl along the radio. Mickey, with, Mickey. The Mickey climbing up the, the <laughs> Rainbow Bridge. The yeah. part that I, I, I would like to, to point out that, um, as many know, Monty played Final Fantasy XIV earlier. Mm-hmm. And there's a similar scene in Endwalker. And he texted me, he's like, Are they trying to rip off Metal Gear here? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yes. Metal Gear was kind of the first one to do the walk, right? Um, And Final Fantasy did it better. Wrong. I I cried during Metal Gear Solid. I I cried during Final Fantasy XIV too, to be fair. Thank God. So regardless, right, they save the day. Um, Snake contracts like 50 cancers walking down a microwave corridor to install it. The war economy gets destroyed. And learning that he has a child, annoyingly also called Jack, Raiden reunites with Rose and they settle down to form a family. He even gets a new body with artificial skin. Look at him go, doesn't he look great? The last time we see him, he is happily embracing his wife and son, assured by Rose that he's not Jack the Ripper. The end. To her, he's just Jack. Oh. The lover. Yes. Which brings us to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I am not going to talk about Rose or Jack in this at all because they literally do not appear in the game, but there is an understanding that basically during the events of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Raiden is a dad 
and Rose and little baby Jack are at home cooking dinner. I would call him a daddy, but you know. I wouldn't. <laughs> He's a sexy anime boy. He's not a daddy. You're going to meet some daddies. Oh. Yeah, you are. You're going to meet some daddies. Okay, so story time. Um, so 2018, an unnamed African country. Classy. Classy. Classy, yeah. To keep things nice and simple and not political at all. Uh, Prime Minister Nmani sits in the back of a limousine as it drives down a city street. He watches the citizens of his country with pride, commenting on how far his people have come since the fall of the Patriots. But he can't take all the credit, and Manny's a good guy. He remarks that he wouldn't have gotten this far if it wasn't for his advisor keeping him right and his security team keeping him safe. He looks at the seat opposite. Isn't that right, Mr. Lightning Bolt? The camera pans down. Mr. Lightning Bolt. Mr. Lightning Bolt. And that's what I call this part. Oh, that's like what a 10-year-old calls themselves on like a, a on a video game, isn't it? I want to be, I want to be clear. Ryden doesn't call himself Mr. Lightning Bolt. Just President Manny does. <laughs> <laughs> that's, his, that's his nickname. So Preston... He calls himself Master Blade Wolf. <laughs> no, we will get Under, to Underscore 420. <laughs> So the camera pans down to a long briefcase and up to our favourite anime boy, Raiden, oh. who removes a sick pair of sunglasses. Look at Why him Why is he so much more anime in this specific game? This whole I mean, game it's probably because it's platinum. platinum. Yeah. Mm. And Platinum loves their anime boys, but... God. So he takes off his sunglasses and he's like, just doing our job, Prime Minister. And I will not be doing that voice the entire time because I will lose my voice, <laughs> but that is exactly what he sounds like. I want to be very clear. That's actually a pretty good right oh, now. Get that vocal fry going. So, and Manny says that after the Patriots fell, he just thought of groups like Rydens as opportunists, enablers of war. But after three years together, he thinks he might have been wrong about these PMCs, these private military companies. You're not. Uh, no. He's judging the entire industry off one person. Yeah. Ryden is representative of the entire. To be fair, history. to be fair to the prime minister, he does have a very sick pair of sunglasses, <laughs> and those look like some really nice leather gloves leather as well. Gloves, yeah. Do you thing. think his hands get cold? I mean, he's presumably still underneath these cybernetic. It would be really unfortunate if they programmed cold into his hands. <laughs> so I, mean, I would assume he has pain receptors. Would pain receptors not feel cold? I guess. This is the important dialogue that needs to happen about this game. This is the important dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very, I'm, I'm very glad you guys are so on it with this because, <laughs> yeah, uh, how, how the side, yeah, how it works is, is it will come back. So, so he's like, just doing our job. And a man is like, right, maybe I was wrong about PMCs. They seem okay. You seem pretty cool. And Ryan corrects him. He says, we prefer private security provider now, sir. So they've, they're not PMCs anymore. They're PSPs. It's important to rebrand every yes. so often. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Sony bought him out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's important. I think that's the important distinction here, though, is that Raiden is not part of a PMC. They they just do security work. They okay. do not fight on behalf of governments or anything like that. So right now... They just own... do security on behalf of governments. So, absolutely, yeah. So, his, he's a bodyguard. That's all yeah. he is here. I guess it's his only applicable skill is, is, is his sort of prowess in, in mm. combat. But it does seem like if I was Rose and we'd ended on that nice happy ending with the kid and you know, you're you're just Jack now. He might have started farming or something. You know, like no. don't go to or, a war torn country to be a bodyguard. Yeah. I mean I guess like, Rose did... looks incredibly intelligent. I'm sure that, you know, Jack can just stay at home. <laughs> Yeah. So since the fall of the Patriots, Ryan <laughs> Ryden did settle down with his family, but you know, a man's gotta eat. So he started working for a security company called Maverick. This is his assignment. Keep and Manny safe. It's clear the two of them have become really good friends over the years. There's oh, nothing saying, bad happens to this guy. There's a saying I like. How long till this car crashes or gets exploded? <laughs> it's it's gonna be like three seconds. Sword through the roof. I it's it's gonna be about three seconds in it. <laughs> There's a saying I like, Raiden says. One sword keeps another in the sheaf. Sometimes the threat of violence is enough of a deterrent. All you need is a good guy with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, by taking a life, others can be preserved. It's no. the code the samurai live by. No. Yes, that is, a, I guess, the code the samurai live by. I don't know nothing about samurai. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't research it. <laughs> game, 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 game came out of Japan, I'll believe him. Everything I learn about samurais and ninjas comes from this game. All right, so yeah. seems accurate. Yeah. So, by the way, I just do, do want to go on the record that I am going to be quoting a lot of this game verbatim because so much of the dialogue is ridiculous. That's and what I did with Kingdom Hearts. So yeah, I, I, I just trying to paraphrase this stuff is is yeah. So 
And Manny is like, hmm, a soldier and a philosopher. You're full of surprises, Mr. Lightning Bolt. Oh, oh, these two are lovely. Yeah, classic banner from that beloved Metal Gear character. But before we can get much more, the limousine unfortunately comes to a stop. And we see a handsome bearded warrior with a red arm and an exoskeleton I suit. I love him. Yeah. What is that smile? What is that, that is... Smile? I... <laughs> He unsheathes a crimson katana that crackles with red electricity. What happens if I press the red button on the side of his head? Nothing. That's he just... goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into standby. <laughs> sorry. This game is awesome. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. We're being really too early. <laughs> so he doesn't say a word. Well, I, d I never got my chance to be the one who gets to derail it for the last, like, year. I was very This curious. is me. This is me bringing out all the pent-up energy from the last year of Lordums. I was not looking forward to figuring out what this dynamic would become. <laughs> we are nailing this. <laughs> he pulls out a katana, right, and it's cool. He's got a red arm, and his katana's like got red electricity on it. He doesn't say a word, but he somersaults on top of the nearest Humvee, which has been following uh, the limousine they're in, and chops the soldier in half. Oh, nice. <laughs> Whoosh. Various soldiers run out to confront him and the warrior slices them down without a second thought. Nobody can get a hit on him. And Manny's limousine turns and roars into the distance and we pan to two new faces. Boris... Crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna try and say this. Boris VP. Boris Vyacheslavovich Popov. I reckon that Honestly, wasn't bad. That sounded... Yeah, that sounded legit. So what? Okay. Boris uh, Vyacheslavovich Popov, a mean, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna call him Boris from now on, a mean-faced Russian on an iPad, and Courtney Collins, a fresh-faced blonde stuck in one of the cars closest to and Manny. Just like with previous Metal Gear games, they're part of our team. Uh, so you can have little codec calls with them, um, all that stuff, they'll fill you in on some background details, but that's Raiden's team, right? right? So they're gonna call him across the adventure. Boris is Raiden's boss. He is the founder of Maverick, he's the big chief. Courtney is Maverick's data analyst. Her whole shtick is she keeps spilling her coffee. That is about as much character as she is given. Uh, but she's a crazy cat. She spills her coffee, you know? Just occasionally spills her coffee uh, in every cutscene she's in. It's not a personality. Uh, What's, uh, what, tell, me about, tell me about this new guy you've been seeing. Oh, he's great. What a, what a personality. Spills his coffee. Yep. What a guy. Well, you know, Metal Gear, female characters, in it. So, Boris orders Raiden to get Manny to safety, but their escape is blocked by more soldiers, all wielding swords. But don't worry, Raiden has this covered. He tells the driver to keep going and calmly steps out of the car. He grips the collar of his business suit and with a flourish, whips it into the air. Oh. It's all slow motion and stuff. He whips into the air, revealing his own exosuit underneath. What I'm hearing is that we're just getting everything ready for, um... Get in the comments, uh, Yuck is a Lordumps. <laughs> if you want to take that chase, be my guest. So, with a flourish, he whips it in the air, revealing his own exosuit underneath. He holds his briefcase out, the one that he had in the car, he opens it, and it drops a shiny katana that wait, crackles with- wait, 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 wait! It drops a shiny katana that crackles with, da 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 blue electricity! No, oh. Wait, 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 did, did he- because I, I didn't comment on this before, because I knew you were just going to say video game shut up, Chase. Um, did he take Solidus Snake's katanas because those crackled with blue? Nope. This is a brand new one that he got made as wow. working as part of Maverick. Also, I'd like to point out that is not a sheath. His philosophy earlier doesn't even hold. So, ironically, so the briefcase you're looking at, so he draw. It's not like he opens it and he pulls it out, right? He he it, it unlatches and then it like magnetically drops and hovers underneath the briefcase and then he grabs it and tosses away the briefcase and now he's ready to. I mean, that's 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 cool as hell. Still not a sheath. Mm. Well, it doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to talk about gameplay for a Any sec. Any samurai get in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick note on gameplay. I just, I want to give you a bit of a vibe of how cool this... I'm sorry, is that his intestines in this video? By the way, this is not a cutscene, what you're looking at here on the screen, viewers. Yes. The little I know of this game, this is actual gameplay. So, serious, serious his intestines? This. Yes, Chase. Oh, this, his, his intestines are being cut. So basically what happens is the biggest draw of Revengeance, and this was the heart of the marketing campaign, was that it had a mechanic called Blade Mode. The slogan was, cut anything, cut everything, and it means it. So if you hold down one of the trigger buttons, time slows down, and you can angle ride and sword to slice through literally everything. Cars, <laughs> enemies, trees, crates, doesn't matter. And whatever you cut will split apart based on exactly where you cut it. It is really, really it's cool. Insane. And you can do like 20 cuts at once, and yeah. it will like I cut them up into bits. love this. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. That That is the core mechanic of the game. Excuse me while I just uh, open Steam on my phone. <laughs> 
I do not do this justice. I'm going to have to show you some cutscenes from it. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, so, so cut, Blade Mode, it's awesome. I just want to give you a sense of what we're doing. But there's also a sub mechanic called Zandatsu, where you cut off body parts of enemies and it gives you unlockables and stuff. So, for example, in the screen you have here, yes, his intestine, he's going to grab the intestine and it's going to give him some extra XP uh, and some health. Uh, that, the arm, this arm is going green. If he collects enough of these, uh, he will use them to unlock more proper yes, upgrades. If he collects or... arms, yeah, just, just. Sticks him in his bag. Is he a, is he a robot cannibal then, with the intestine <laughs> stuff, basically? Okay, moving on. <laughs> so, the, we're, look, the story is ridiculous, and we're going to have a good giggle with this, but the video game is absolutely incredible, and it's incredibly short. As Raiden chops through waves and waves of bodies, we cut away to President and Manny. No, he's cutting away. Raiden's cutting uh, away. Very good. <laughs> his, li <laughs> his limousine has crashed. He is lying unconscious, and his security team are struggling to fight off the enemy. So, to make things worse, a goddamn Metal Gear Ray shows up. It crashes into battle. Thank and God it's a Ray. It's, 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 if it was it's any other Ray. one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be threatened. Well, Metal Gear Ray, you might remember, was destroyed in Metal Gear Solid 4. Yes, but at this point, you've said that we've had four Metal Gear Rays, mm. so I'm assuming that somebody's just, you know, mass producing them. Yes. Nukes and all. But Metal Gear Ray is not alone. It is joined by da -da -da -da, this guy, a thick, bald cyborg with a barcode on his forehead, also wearing an exosuit. <laughs> Damn, that is thick with two Cs. Mm. So we don't learn his name for ages yet, but just to keep things clean, I'm just going to tell you now, because it's not some big twist. His name is Sundowner. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Damn, franchise. he sounds like a bit of a downer. Oh. No, I'm sorry. I, sorry, if I don't get anything for Cutaway, you don't get anything for that. So, yes, Sun, this is Sundowner. He speaks with a Southern American accent. It's like t proper Texas style, like very... So what I'm hearing is I should go into my draw for the rest of this, uh, <laughs> the rest of this lore dump. If you stick a gravel in there, yeah, that, that you've got Sundowner. I'm going back to... I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> So, th th so him and the cyborg we saw before with the red arm, they both work for a private military company called Desperado Enforcement. That's so much cooler That's than whatever whatever Raiden's was. Yeah. Maverick. Maverick is right. Desperado's way cooler, and oh. I really like their logo. What, th what the evil-looking logo? <laughs> yes! That's so cool! So, Sundowner pulls out a scissor blade... <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this Sundowner? I'm enjoying Sundowner. A scissor blade? Is this Kill a Kill? Yes, yes, straight up like, like Kill a Kill. He pulls out a scissor blade and one of the security guards with it. He smiles with glee, looks at him, living his best life, and he just decapitates him right there and then. Snip, snip. So then he stomps over to Manny, tosses him over his shoulder. But wait! Raiden arrives. Da -da -da -da. Raiden is like, what do you want with the Prime Minister? And Sundowner replies... I want him dead, of course. Africa's getting too peaceful. Business ain't been the same since the Patriots were shut down. Some of us liked the war economy. How's an honest warmonger supposed to make a living? An honest warmonger? <laughs> <laughs> he pulls out a mass his massive scissor blade, his big sword, and he's like, don't worry, I won't kill the Prime Minister right now. Not while he's still useful. And then he bounces away. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> like, yeah, when, yeah, and when, he, when I say he bounces away, he like does like, like a Hulk leap. You know, it's like whoosh <laughs> over buildings and he just vanishes. Does he um, get back to his boss and his boss goes, you did, you did make time to stop and explain part of our plan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, good. So he bounces away with a manny over his shoulder um, and, and he's gone. Raiden goes to follow, but that is when Metal Gear Ray attacks. Cue our first boss fight. Oh, it looks awesome. Doesn't it look so cool? That is very cool. So it is, It's it is, the first time I've ever been threatened by a Metal Gear. It's, uh, it, and I think it's, it's like with the kind of upscaling in graphics since those early games as well, mm. relatively. Uh, yep. it, it still looks pretty good, though. It's Did just, it's right? one guy with a sword facing down a huge mech. That's awesome. It is Did it always have a tail? Yes, always. Oh. But it's it didn't have the, the but it didn't have the red, right? The red is kind of, uh, they've... Yeah. Yes, the red is, it's, it's Desperado Enforcement's Metal Gear. Ah, right? cool. It's here to help them. That's awesome. Because every PMC has their own Metal Gear. Pretty much. Honestly, see, by this point, it's so common. You might remember at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, Revolver Ocelot basically leaked the blueprints for Metal Gear Ray worldwide, and oh, by this yeah. point, everybody just started having random mechs and stuff. Only Ray. None of the other Very ones. responsible yeah. of him. Well, again, it's the best one, so if you just, even if you make, like, a discount... Because it was kind of the final version of this, wasn't it, at the time? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was at the time. So this Metal Gear Ray, which I want to remind you was a very difficult fight in previous Metal yeah. Gear games... This is your tutorial. It boss. took Snake and and Raiden in a previous. 
Right? It did, yeah. I mean, this remember way back Metal Gear Solid Four. This chopped off Raiden's arms. It crushed him under debris and it chopped off his arms. Well, it's fine because now he knows how to fight it. Well, exactly. So clearly he can solo it now. So. It's your tutorial for blade mode, right? You slice off chunks of its armor, but you get its he- if you get its health low enough, it throws down one of its massive arms like a sword, and Ryan blocks oh. with his sword, and rock lyrics kick in on the beat when it comes in. Every boss oh, fight has awesome. its own r- custom-made rock song with lyrics, oh. and I will show you some of the lyrics later because they are absolutely incredible. So, for example, um, the lyrics what is happening during the fight and they evolve with the fight. So, Raiden parries Metal Gear Ray's massive arm sword and then he picks it up and he spins it around and tosses Metal Gear Ray into the air, but it's not done. He leaps above the Metal Gear, raises his sword and brings it down, slicing it up, coming in for a superhero landing. But oh no. This is very good. Metal Gear Ray is not dead. I like this. It launches rockets at Raiden and the only thing he can to do is leap from rocket to rocket to get close enough to his head. Landing there, he jams his sword right into it and splits it in two as he slides down the game. All of this is gameplay. Are you hyped yet? That is unbelievable. <laughs> he's he's legolassing the fucking missiles. Excuse me while I just go check out my Steam cart. <laughs> click click purchase. It's so good. I love this. So yes. Um. Well, we're not done. With Metal Gear Ray finally dead, right? Raiden spots Sundowner racing across the city with Unmanny. He's just like popping above buildings, just leaping over towards the train. <laughs> and he, he follows, eventually confronting him at the front of a moving train. But he's not alone. Sundowner is joined by the handsome warrior with the red sword. Oh. Very cool. Uh, for any anyone just listening along, our, our handsome red-armed warrior is sitting very casually, head in hand, barely even looking at Raiden as he approaches. Mm. I'd really like to know why uh, this feels like a lot more effort to tie him up like this than it would be to just, you know, t- handcuff him and chuck yeah. him in a box. So for context, uh, Chase, is, uh, there's a, sc- a picture on screen and a man, he is tied up, almost like he's about to be crucified, sort of. Yeah, he's sort of, they're on the train and he's, he's yeah. Uh, it just feels like a lot of extra effort here. Sundowner grabs Manny by the throat and is like, Why don't we ever hear speeches about all the good things war has done for us? Jobs, technology, a common purpose. All we're saying is, give war a chance. And Ryden... <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I think my, that was okay. It's, give it's not war a the, chance. It's not the accent. It's give the give war a chance is lovely. Raiden dives in to attack. He doesn't even hang around. He's straight in. But he's blocked by the handsome warrior. As he's knocked back, Sundowner <laughs> plows his massive sword into Unmani, killing him. But I thought I he wasn't going to kill him because he's still useful. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not useful. He was yeah. never... Then this whole mission was a waste of time. They wasted their time and money on this mission. They wasted their time, but they... They didn't... lost a Metal Gear Ray. They lost Metal Gear Ray, but they killed President They Manny. could have done that without any of that. They could have just killed him at the first instance. They didn't need to bring the Metal Gear Ray. They could have saved that. Shot him in the head and run off. So a spout of blood coats Raiden. I'm sure cyborgs could be snipers too. A spout of blood coats Raiden. As Sundowner grapples up to a nearby helicopter, Raiden starts to recover from his shock of watching and Manny die. He hears Sundowner's parting words as he says, He's all yours, Jetstream Sam. Well, he doesn't call him Sam, but that's his name. He's, he, this is Jetstream, Jetstream Sam. Sam. That's amazing. I love it. The no no notes. No oh, notes. Such bad names. No. Sorry, you laughed at Sundowner, but you didn't laugh at Jet. You don't like Jetstream. I know. I'm 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 on board now. That's a no notes. This is perfect. <laughs> so, um, Sundowner leaves. You can see him on. The, he's up on the helicopter in the background, and Sam prepares to fight Raiden. So Raiden failed in protecting his pal. He did. And yes. of course, every cyborg has a katana. Every single one. Pretty much. You asked, you asked why the swords, and I would argue it, it's only viable when you've got a robot body that's immune to bullets. That's the only person who, who can wield a sword. It only matters. Well, I mean, they're immune to bullets. The yeah. other people aren't immune to well, bullets. Yeah, but, but Put just, a rocket launcher in their arm. They just want an excuse. So Sundowner leaves Sam and Ryan to fight. As the train enters a tunnel, Q another boss fight. I would like to point out that there's maybe 10 minutes of gameplay between the Metal Gear Ray boss fight and the Jetstream what Sam boss fight. Opening. Right? So, Jetstream Sam is tough as nails. Despite Raiden's best efforts, he can't get a hit in, and Sam absolutely kicks his ass. He's like, self-taught, not half... Oh, sorry, he's... I'm not going to do the accent, right? But he's Hispanic. He's got a Spanish accent. Um, so he's like, self-taught, not half bad, but your technique lacks... 
something. Ah, I see, you deny your weapon its purpose. These words shock Raiden more than in Manny's death did. Something gives in him and his stance weakens. Sam knocks him back and cuts out Raiden's left eye. Nice. Gosh darn. That's why he has an eye patch. Wait a minute. Why does he have an eye patch when he's a cyborg? Why does he not just replace the eye? So, Jess from Sam <laughs> is like, your sword, it yearns to bathe in the blood of your enemies, but you hold it back. Why? But Raiden, clutching his missing eye, gets to his feet and points his blade at Sam. My sword is a tool of justice, he says. This is so anime. Sam laughs and is like, this is what happens when you bring a tool to a sword fight, and slashes viciously at Ra Raiden, eventually cutting off his left arm. Raiden is like, shit, not again, and starts to wildly swing at Sam. He's like, he's sick of having his limbs chopped off by things. <laughs> but his foe is having none of it, playing with his food, and just as Sam is about to go in for the killing blow, the train leaves the tunnel. Boris Vyacheslavovich Popov pulls up alongside the train in a Humvee with a goddamn rocket launcher. Nice. Jetstream Sam, is he starts laughing. He's like, oh my god, this is great. I love fighting. Isn't this a great time? This is a fun fight. Good times all around. He sheathes his blade and leaps into a nearby helicopter, which is just passing overhead. One of the Desperado helicopters. Raiden falls unconscious, armless, eyeless, and he bleeds out on the back of the train. And that is the end of chapter zero. Hmm... Part three. Mistress. What? Yes, part three. Mistress. Mistra Remember, part one was a uh, recap. This is part <laughs> Oh, oh, of, of lore dump. Of lore. Of I, lore dump. I thought you were meaning of game. No, sorry. <laughs> so, part three. This is going to make it easier for me to do the timestamps. Oh, cool. So, part three. Mistress Mistral. Oh. One month later. A jet flies over the ocean. We hear Boris's voice over comms as we cut to the inside of the jet. How does it feel? Boris asks. To fly like a bird. No. It's a Russian accent. No, 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 no. no. I can do a Russian accent. No, 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 you can't. No, sorry, you can't. Fine. How does it feel, Boris? Vetoed. <laughs> it's two votes to one. Fine. On the fine. Russian fine. accent. But I'm doing a German accent. No. So, yeah. Not not for Boris later. Um, how does it feel, Boris asks, to fly like a bird? And we hear Raiden's voice. Like a bird strapped to a remote control rocket. Those two, the banner in this game, honestly. So... <laughs> So, but what happened? How did Raiden survive his battle with Jetstream Sam? Well, luckily, we've got a new member of the team to explain. <laughs> this is Doktor. D-O-K-T-O-R. His shtick is that he's German. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would like to Not point like out to, anywhere, to anywhere, anyone listening along, we've got a screen grab of Doktor looking at a screen. He's got little glasses. He's got a sort of bald head and cyber. Glasses. He does. He's got a, a sort of bolo tie on his shirt. And the caption on screen from what he's saying is just the words, extract their fluids. Mm -hmm. My favorite hobby. It's all... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so... His real name, for what it's worth, right, is Wilhelm Voigt, but he is known as Doctor. Nobody ever calls him Wilhelm or Voigt. He's always called Doctor in conversations. Doctor, right? So, Doctor tells us that he has rebuilt Raiden's body. His eye replaced with a cybernetic implant. Then his, why does he wear an eye patch? His arm, pure cyborg arm now. You, why, why, you find out why he wears an eye patch. His arm, pure cyborg arm now. Raiden is reliant on his exosuit to survive, to the point where it can heal him. If he absorbs electrolytes from enemies, Doctor tells us that Raiden will do this by, quote, extracting their fluids. I feel like he could just drink a Gatorade. Yeah. No, and which is why during blade mode, it's based on explanation for blade mode. The, the intestines we were talking about earlier get them riding. Oh. So he he would properly like Darth Vader. He'd die without his suit, kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Cool. So Raiden replies, "They're terrorists. I was planning on that anyway." Extracting their fluids. <laughs> Doctor is like, "Ich liebe Kapitalismus." I love capitalism. If the Berlin Wall had come down earlier, I'd have a Nobel Prize on my shelf. I'm a genius. So he just loves capitalism. This guy. He's he's. Great, look at him go. So he's having the grand As if time. Doctor wasn't an evil enough name. Hair Doctor. So, where is Raiden going? Right, what's, what, we, what are we doing in this bit? What's this chapter about? So, don't worry. We've got one last member of the team to meet. Kevin Washington, working support. His shtick is that he works support. And if you're looking at the picture, you'll see that Kevin is moving a coffee cup away from Courtney Collins so she doesn't spill it because she's a, she's a rascal. Look at her go, spilling her coffee. 
So Kevin tells us our mission. We are to enter the country Abkhazia, a country that was absorbed into Russia and neutralize the terrorists that have taken over and restore the rightful government or what's left of it. Um, restore the rightful government of Russia? No, sounds... of, no of Abkhazia. Think Ukraine. Oh, okay. This sounds pretty uh, private military and not private security. Have they just given up on the whole private security thing? You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> well, are they being are they being paid by a government to do this? Or are they doing it of their own volition? Uh, no, they are not doing it of their own volition. They are being paid for this, but they are being paid by the, the country of Abkhazia. So, so you can be a PM. PMC. So you can be a PMC when you decide it's good. <laughs> Shut up. So, um, what's left of it? Yeah, so, so they're going Sony, to... Sony dropped them. They couldn't use PSP anymore. It's, copy... <laughs> it's trademarked. So, for, for, for a concept here to make it, like, legitimately make sense, um, it, Abkhazia, imagine Ukraine, um, and they're going in to basically kick Russia out of Ukraine and help Ukraine, right? Think about it that way. So, how, how topical. <laughs> yes, yes. But, but imagine in Ukraine, a bunch of terrorists have taken over. Um, so you've got the Ukrainian freedom fighters. They're not the terrorists. It's, yes. it's a different group that is making things worse for the freedom fighters, right? So it doesn't matter, right? So the terrorists are being led by a guy called Andriy Dolsayev. So he's an extremist linked to the St. Petersburg Massacre in 2015, which is a real-life event where a bomb went off in a subway and killed 11 people. Um, he's being helped by <gasps> Desperado Enforcement. Yeah. Sundowner and Co. Right, they're helping this guy with his terrorism. Was and this stuff. meant to be a shocking revelation? No, I'm just, I'm just flagging that that's important. That's okay. all. Um, so he's being helped by Desperado enforcement. Not good. But the real problem is that Jetstream Sam has been sighted in the area. Mm -hmm. The only problem Ryan sees is that nickname. But he's like, yes, time for some vengeance, some revengeance. Still doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> He's gonna take his revengeance on him. He's gonna be. He's just gonna take his vengeance. There's no re. There's not a second time well, he owes him revenge. Lost but it's also his Actually, revenge. if anything, revengeance would be taking revenge on someone that took revenge on you. It would be Jetstream Sam that took revengeance. It's like a reply vengeance. It is important for me to note that like they've never met before this game. There's yeah. Jetstream Sam is not taking any vengeance. Yeah, he's doing his own sense. thing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, doesn't matter, right? So he's going to take some revengeance. Uh, Kevin is like Kevin Washington is like whoa, 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 whoa. Sam was sighted a few weeks back. He might not be there anymore. But keep an eye out, Justin K. Oh, sorry, man. <gasps> Yeah, straight oh. up, he, he makes that joke. He's like, keep an eye out just to get... Oh, so, Ooh, sorry, sorry. Yikes. Uh, Ryan doesn't mind, he's chill with it. He doesn't give a damn, he's fine. You've uh, got to keep your you've got to keep your arm in at this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the mission begins. Uh, Ryan chops his way through the capital city of Abkhazia and we get our first real shot of him. And there he is. Wow. Isn't that a good look? Yeah. I'm still confused by the eye patch. Uh, it's just there, man. It's just... I'm Why sorry. You don't get to. Place? You don't get to do that to us after a year of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> but he has an eye in there now. He does, but it's a cybernetic eye. Maybe he's just a bit embarrassed about it. That's not made it useless. No, he can take off the blindfold anytime he wants. He's fine. So anyway, um, so he's, he's there and he chops through the city. But as he fights through the city, Raiden notices that there are a lot of cyborgs here. Weird. Most private military companies just have a few really skilled ones, like a few Rydens, uh, but it seems like Desperado have just like a crap ton And of also, grunts. we need an excuse for him to get power-ups off, uh, off their bodies. Straight okay. up, yeah. yes. Um, so a few really skilled ones, but Abkhazia is full of them, and they are just being thrown at him like regular soldiers. Like, Desperado, they've got, they've got money, man. They've got resources. Whatever they're doing, they've got the stuff. So... Kevin. The stuff. The stuff. Kevin Washington is like, whoa, remember, cyborgs aren't robots. They're thinking, feeling people like you. Maybe, like, stop killing so many of them. And Ryan's like, nah, I don't care. They're working for terrorists. To me, they're just vending machines. They sold their feet. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Is that how you see yourself, Ryan? <laughs> they sold their fate when they took this job. I'm just the Reaper. Oh, no. I. <laughs> He's got a lot of anger issues, this guy. His goal is to get to an old refinery on the other side of the city. This was basically the reason why Russia wanted to absorb Abkhazia into itself. It is a huge, to be clear, Abkhazia not a real country. This is not a yeah, historical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it is a basically Abkhazia have this huge refinery, very valuable to Russia. But as our mission continues, oh no, he gets ambushed by da 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 da, Blade Wolf, a robot yes. dog with a chainsaw for a tail. Yes, Blade Wolf. Any cool. I joked about the name <laughs> Wolfblade earlier, I think, and it was genuinely, I did not know this was a thing. I was making a joke about how ridiculous these 10-year-old boy names are, yep. and now there is Blade Wolf. This is, this is glorious. Isn't it just? 
I'd like to... I'd like to put out there that I very recently watched a video of somebody putting a gun on a Boston Dynamics dog. Oh, God. Um, and this is the future we're going towards. Oh, no. Um, It'd be cooler if it was a chainsaw. <laughs> like a gun. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like we should send this to the same YouTuber and have them put a chainsaw instead. Can, can I just say, just just not to get political for that, right? Can we're we not, not do no, 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 we're not talking about automated guys, robot dogs? No, exactly, yeah. And yeah. I'm also just saying, like, how lame are guns? Like, we have worked our way through this. And, like, how cool are chainsaws and katanas I'd and rather, swords? I'd rather, you know? be, I'd rather be gunned yeah. than chainsaw I've got. No, say. no, but I like if you're somebody's like, I protect my house with my my automatic, but shut up, man. Get a katana and then we'll talk because that is so lame. They this wasn't so cool political. Said, yeah. You said you were threatened. This wasn't political yeah. at all. It's not political. It's not political. I'm just saying guns are well, boring. depends what country you're in. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like guns, guns are so dull. Look at this. Blade Wolf and he's got a chainsaw and he's got a sword on his tail and he's awesome. So, wait, is, is, is this an enemy type or is this a specific character oh. named Blade Wolf? This is a boss. Char oh, okay, this is a character okay. called Blade Wolf. He's my favorite character in the entire game. Dope. So, Blade Wolf is like, I possess intelligence far beyond human reckoning. He's got like a robot, like AI voice. So he's like, I possess intelligence far beyond human reckoning. And Ryan's like, okay, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? <laughs> Basically, we had a day the other day where we, we played around with chat GP and this, this is basically what Ryden's doing. 42. <laughs> <laughs> Blade Wolf, write me a script with these parameters. So, Blade Wolf... I cannot connect to the internet. <laughs> So, Blade Wolf has got absolutely no time for Raiden shit. He's like, he shoots some knives at Raiden, like, out of his tail. He just, like, bursts them like shurikens. Um, and he's like, I, like, so Raiden's like, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? And Blade Wolf's like, I am here to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I can analyze orders, but I can't disobey them. Should I disobey orders, my memory would be wiped. Now, fight. And cue boss fight. So... It's cool. It's a cool fight. There's nothing too crazy about this. This sounds like that if he disobeys orders, he just gets his own freedom because he won't remember the memories of being under their control. No, because he's still under their control, though. He gets deprogrammed, but he forgets everything that happened before. And he doesn't want that. Uh, you know, he's, so he's, he has to d disobey orders. Um, yeah. I mean, look, if I put a gun to your head, Chase, and said, do everything I say for the next week or I will literally wipe all of your memories of all time, I think you'd do it. Well, that's the point. Of all time. So you wouldn't remember that he's gone the company. No, he'd be wiped and then he'd be reprogrammed back into it. So, boss fight, we fight him, we beat him, okay? We don't kill him. Um, Raiden picks up a signal from him. It's his last words. This will happen for every boss moving forwards, right? So he basically takes like a little chip and you get to hear the dying words, like the Assassin's Creed things that they do. They're dying words. Blade Wolf stutters. Directive, liberate, nation, ensure, freedom, obey, directive, must obey directive, ensure freedom, freedom undefined. So he doesn't understand what the just doesn't understand what the concept of freedom is. Far beyond not, human yeah, reckoning. Far beyond human reckoning. <laughs> so Can't even on. get a dictionary installed. Yeah. <laughs> so he so Raiden fights on, right? Blade, Blade Wolf is is he's left behind. Um, and fighting on, Raiden reaches the refinery where he sees <gasps> Andrei Dolsayev, the terrorist, pointing a gun at a mysterious woman. Woo! From a distance, it looks like they're arguing, and eventually Dolsayev storms off. The woman turns around, sees Raiden, and blows him a kiss before leaping away. This is the most Platinum Games character I've seen since Bayonetta. Fair. <laughs> this, she looks like she was taken out of Bayonetta. She's very Bayonetta, I would say. Um, without Bayonetta's heart. Oh, she's got a bit of heart. I, li I like her. And um, so Doctor pops up on comms and is like, Raiden, what's happening? Your heart rate spiked. But Raiden ignores him. The woman gets away, but it isn't long before they meet again. So she pulls a kiss at him and Raiden's heart goes, whoop. Uh -oh. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, hot woman. <laughs> hot woman alert. <laughs> Just to check, is that a cyborg heart or a human heart? Presumably a real heart. heart. Oh. Yeah. How yeah. poetic. Yeah. So... But it isn't long before these two meet again, right? Q, 20 minutes of slashing and stabbing, and eventually Raiden makes it to the top of the refinery, where he finally meets her. I'm not going to lie, I'm really digging this pink and blue camo. Oh. I, I, I really like it, actually. <laughs> it's about to get better. Um, so the woman is like, I am Mistral, the cold wind of France. She's got a French accent, I'm not doing it. I was oh, wondering... so German's fine. No, the German's fine. Doctor's like Doctor's whatever, right? He's not. He's not really a German. He's just whatever he is. So she's like, okay, fine. She's like, I am Mistral, oh, no, no, the cold wind of France. 
<laughs> so she's like, I'm Mistral, the cold wind of France. I was wondering when you would come, Jack the Ripper. Oh. Raiden is like, nobody calls me that anymore. Where's Dolsayev? And Mistral is like, pfft, I can show you a better time than that crusty old bear. I know, <laughs> yeah, I know all about you. Your time as a child soldier. I was born in Algeria. I'm actually only half French. We had our own civil war in the 90s, so we're cut from the same cloth. She introduces herself as the cold wind of France. She's like, I'm actually only half French. I'm sorry. People speak France in Algeria, though. That's the, for uh, yeah. colonial reasons. Yeah, I know, but she, why is she the cold wind of France and not the cold wind of Algeria? It seems to have more of an impact on her characterization, you know? But anyway, so, I was born in Algeria. I'm actually only half French. We had our own civil war in the 90s, so we're cut from the same cloth. I, too, found my calling on the battlefield. I fought savagely, without purpose or meaning, and then I met him. His ideals gave my life meaning. What are your ideals, Jack? And Raiden falters, but he replies, I protect the weak, and if I must kill to protect them, then so be it. Mistral drops her coat, ooh, and attaches... Oh. What? So she takes a bunch of little, little, like, little orbs with hands for feet that are little, like, little robot things, and she attaches them to her exosuit, and then suddenly she's got like a million arms. Well, it looks like Doc Ock, I guess. I was about to say, I take, I take it back. Uh, mm. Solidus isn't Doc Ock. She is Hansy Lady. She's a Hansy Lady. Uh, so, cute boss fight. You fight her. Uh, the battle takes us all it's across. It's a very cool design. It is a very cool design. I like I like, I like Miss Trial's design a lot. She's. She, yeah, she's she's cool. She's not. I don't think she gets enough screen time, to be honest. Um, really so what in. I'm hearing is she's about to die. They're really leaning in heavy to the red red lighting for mm. for bad guys. Oh yeah. 100%. Well, doesn't doesn't Raiden also have a red glowing eye? Uh you, yeah, not he, yet. He doesn't. Oh. It's important for me to flag that Raiden's eyes right now look like your eyes and my eyes. They're just cybernetic. Oh, eyes. he needs yeah. to take. He needs to rip it out of somebody. Absorb their fluids. Yeah. Um. So. Q boss fight. So the two of the battle. The battle takes all across the rooftops and piping of the refinery. Just imagine like a nuclear power plant and they're fighting on the, the edge it. of... Yeah. Um, so it's, it's awesome. Mistral mocks Jack for not being able to keep up, but eventually we best her, chopping her up into little bits. Just like with Blade Wolf, we tune into her final words. It's Dolsayev, the terrorist, on the other line. I lost, she says. So this is how they felt. Dying for a cause. Dolsayev's like, dying? No, I need you to live. Live. And Mistral replies, Je t'aime, de tout mon cœur. Which translates as, I love you with all my heart. Je t'aime? Dolsayev sounds confused. Mistral, you never told me. <laughs> <laughs> so these two were in love, her and the, this, this guy that we're here to capture. Raiden picks up her walkie-talkie as she's like saying her dying words, and it's like, "Lol." <laughs> <laughs> he picks up the he picks up the walkie-talkie as Dalsayev is like crying over the thing, and he goes, he's like, "Je t'aime, <laughs> mon ami." No, it's worse. He picks up the walkie-talkie. Bear in mind, so Mistral just died. Dalsayev crying over the radio, being like, "Oh my god, like this woman that I love." And Ryan picks up and goes, "She's not talking to you, idiot." <laughs> <laughs> Surrender. I think Solid Snake was more, like, emotionally intelligent than Raiden. <laughs> he's not emotionally intelligent at all. What? Yeah, like, so, but again, bear in mind, he's, he thinks he's a bad guy, he's a Stop terrorist, break, right? idiot. Yeah. So, and of course, you can't show bad guys any human decency. You Never. You just need to be an yeah. absolute You're asshole. Bad. This isn't Kingdom Hearts, Chase. All it right. doesn't matter who <laughs> they are, what they've done. Asshole mode. Mm. So he's like, she's not talking to you, idiot. Surrender. And Dolsayev is like... Who else would he be, she be talking to? <laughs> Jack, I met you 30 seconds ago, but I've been in love with you madly this whole time. Well, I think he's more like, she's dead. She's not really here, bro. Sort of thing. I think he's just mocking, like, I killed your woman. Like, I'm coming <laughs> for you. Yeah. So Dolsayev is like, why would I surrender? We are exactly where I want us to be. The refinery is a big bomb built with Russian money to make Russian money. It's no plant for Abkhazia. It's their prison. But now they will be free. So we thought that he was working on behalf of the Russians or whatever, but no, he he's just going to blow up this power plant. So Russia has no, nothing in Abkhazia worth using. Why? That's his plan. Well, because the th his thought process, I think, is he's not really that important, right? It's a tiny little part of the mission. Yeah. But I think his thought process is, well, if there's nothing here that Russia wants, Russia will leave and we get to be our own well, country Surely Russia, Russia would double down in Abkhazia if they blew up their refinery. What an idiot. Yeah. 
So that's his plan. So he says, it's no plan for Abkhazia, it's their prison, but now they will be free. He blows himself and the refinery sky high, dying for his ideals. Oh. Raiden is blown back, but survives, and Boris calls in to say a rescue chopper is on the way to evacuate him. The mission failed. Mm. Raiden failed in Abkhazia. Again. Again, and he was faced with two people that just died for their ideals. Again, oh this is goodness. what we're coming back to. This concept of like, Raiden, what do you fight for? What do you believe in? What is the point? He's going up against people he thinks are true evil, but like, yeah, sure. You know, Dolsayev blew up a power plant, but also I would at argue, least he died for something. I would argue Raiden's uh, belief system is obviously, we would all agree, a bit more justified than theirs. And also, he does just fight for to to protect people and make it better. That's a, that's a perfectly valid reason to fight. True. The, the question, and this is something to carry into the rest of the game, is the question that the game asks almost is, is that too vague? What does that mean? Literally, what does that physically mean? Dosayev had a plan, an ideal, a belief system that he died for, regardless of whether or not you believe in it or not. Yeah. What does Ryan believe in? I help people. Literally, didn't help Didn't help Dosayev, didn't help Mistral, didn't help all the cyborg soldiers he's just cut through. Mm. You know, what, what does he physically believe in? What is his... How can you... If he had to write it on a wall, was that all he'd say? Help people? What does that mean? That's the question this game asks. Classic Metal Gear, getting quite deep with it. Um, end of chapter one. <laughs> Neil off camera is just does, doesn't look convinced. Part four. Mexico, baby! So, a couple of weeks later, Raiden is in Mexico. Kevin Washington calls him up and is like, so you get a disguise, you, you've got a disguise, right? Otherwise you'll stand out being a cyborg and all. Mexico doesn't really have cyborgs. And Raiden's like, relax, Kev, I'll blend right in. As we zoom out and we see him clad in a poncho and a sombrero. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You can not only can you still see that he's a cyborg. I just think like I like like Raiden's just sort of low key xenophobic. It's it's the fact that not only are like the racist jokes there, but they're very self aware of him and being you know bad. You know what? I just bet in the score there's a little trumpet flourish. Also, I'm only noticing what is this weird like lower cyborg skull that they had to like engrave. Skull teeth. It's, yeah, no, it's the bottom of his jaw because his jaw was smashed off from using the... the cool. Yeah. If they recreated it, why did they have to make it look like a skull? Mm -hmm. I think the poncho and sombrero are a good look. So Raiden is not alone on his mission. He's got backup this time. Blade Wolf is joining. He's now working for Maverick. Yeah! So it turns out How that... How did he... Lose the they gave him a dictionary. Oh. They, they evacuated Blade Wolf's remains from Abkhazia, and Doctor made some adjustments along with some repairs. Remote piloting and AI wiping have been disabled. So he works for Maverick now, he's, he's free thinking, and he retains all of his memories. And they taught him what freedom means. Uh, he's still, he's, he's, he's getting there. So he's enslaved by Maverick now. Uh, not enslaved. No, he's getting there. He, he can think for himself now, whereas before he couldn't. Uh, but it will take him time to understand what concepts are. You know, it's not, it's only been two weeks. So in Ryan's but words, he's he's an AI that transcends human reckoning. Yeah, two weeks should be plenty enough time. Right. Okay, but. Doesn't matter, right? So, Blade Wolf's in the car with Ryden. He's in the back and he's having a wee snooze. He's, he's waking up. He's like, ooh, on a mission with my new best friend. And <laughs> Ryden's like, let's throw him a bone. <laughs> Just in case you didn't get the joke, Blade Wolf's head rears up from the back of the car to explain. He goes, wordplay. My exoskeleton resembles a canine. Canines enjoy bones. <laughs> that is I'm funny. using on two levels. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy the design of his face, especially these teeth. Oh yeah, those are very cool teeth. I love, I love Blade Wolf. So, um, Raiden gets out of the car, and we cut to the perspective of two Mexican men as they see a cyborg and a sombrero step out of a sports car and climb into a nearby sewer, followed by a huge <laughs> robot dog with a chainsaw for a tail. <laughs> they conclude that he must be a mariachi player. <laughs> So, what's up with Raiden this time? What's he doing in Mexico? What's the plan? Well, their client wants him to investigate the Desperado Affiliated Research Center somewhere in that area. That's quite lucky because Raiden hates Desperado, so he's like, perfect, the mission for me. Good thing we've got a random client that wants to do this. Don't worry about who the Not client suspicious. is. Not suspicious. That's his ideals. His ideals is I hate Desperado. Yeah. 
You, you, you might, you, true, fair, uh, you might think that this mysterious client is important. We never find out who the client is. It's not important. That would have been interesting. It's pure luck. It was That's Sam. Funny. Sam just wanted to <laughs> get his old buddy back. Honestly, I would believe that, uh, but it's never confirmed. We never find out who the client is. It doesn't matter. It's pure happenstance that Ryden is, in fact, back doing a Desperado-style mission. So, he's off, and uh, they go into the sewer together. Um, there are rumours that this research centre, whatever it is, um, that it's involved with cartels and human trafficking. So he needs to infiltrate the lab and find out anything he can. That's his mission. So as he delves into the sewers... Also, Ryden, unrelated, yes. I like Ryden's high heels. Yeah. Just thought I'd point that out. Yeah. I yeah. like him. It's a good look. Uh, he needs to look taller to impose his enemies. Makes his calves look really great. Mm. So Ryden and Blade Wolf go into the sewer together. Um, and while he's there, he finds this boy... George, like Georgetown, he speaks English pretty well, but the occasional word is slightly different. So the game decides to give him two sets of subtitles every time he speaks like he's speaking a foreign language. I'd also like to point out that the top line is not Spanish. Me named George mm, yeah. is not Spanish. Yeah, yeah, you, you all, I, I will I agree. It's I think that's Spanish. what Monty was saying, but like, also you don't need to translate that. You don't so, need to translate to, me to, to, named George. To, 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 well, exactly, yeah, and it's all like this. And to give you a sense of what the accent is, uh, I'm not. Uh, it, but it's not. It's, it's not anything. It's just a nothing accent. He goes, "Me named George, like Georgetown," and then it comes to the bottom saying, "My name's George, like Georgetown." <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, I got that. Um, I think it might be a language, but honestly, the the two sets of subtitles are so unnecessary. He is speaking pidgin English. That's what yeah. he's speaking. Um, so yeah, so he finds George in the sewers, right? And he's like, "What? Who are you?" Ryan's like, why are you in a sewer? And George is like, me? Why are you here? You lose the map to your ninja hideout, ninja man? And <laughs> yeah, that's uh, literally, again, direct. And, and, and Ryan says, no, 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 no. I'll turn it back on you. Why are you a child here in a sewer? Yeah. Um, so yeah, 100%. But so George knows about the research lab. This is what he tells Ryan. He's homeless and an orphan and a member of the Mexican mafia sold him to the research lab. But George wasn't alone. He was shipped off with a whole container's worth of children. Sorry, Jim. Classic Metal Gear. Rescue them and make them into soldiers. That's oh, what we do. Classic Metal Gear. <laughs> but then, George tells us, I learned what they were going to do to us. They wanted to kill us and cut out our organs. So I ran. George. They wanted to extract the fluids. Yeah. So the, yeah, they wanted to take out the... the, the, the they wanted to cut bits out of them. What, what was that for? Hmm, we'll find out. So... George thinks Raiden is wild. He's like, you're the coolest cyborg ninja I've ever seen. I want to be like you one day. Are you going to save my friends? And Raiden's like, yes. So he tells George to sit tight and radios his team to come and pick him up while he breaks into the research lab. I've got a little note here. It's here we find a box. A cardboard box. Raiden can now do stealth. He can do the Metal Gear thing of going in the cardboard box. He learns from his mentor. Yeah. It's the best way to do stealth. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance does not have very solid stealth mechanics. It's that. You go in your box and you move. There's no tranquilizers, there's no darts, there's no distractions. It's just a Metal Gear joke. But I thought it'd be worth me noting that there is a cardboard Thank box. You. you get it. I do appreciate it. So Ryden eventually breaks into the research lab. And when he does, what he finds is incredibly disturbing. Rows and rows of brains in metal containers oh. with cybernetic eyeballs staring out at him. And it's like you hear like a like a bat sort of sound, you know, like the, the sort of ultrasonic sound, like la, 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 sort of sound. That's what you hear when you look at them. And the eyes are flickering back and forward erratically. It's really quite an upsetting image. I, um, I'm, I'm sure it is, but just in the way that the screenshot looks, they look very cute and cartoony. Yes, that's and kind of what they're doing. Kids' eyes. Yay, yes. they're yeah. children's eyes. So what we learned from this is that Desperado are trafficking kids and taking their brains. This is, in, in a series with child soldiers and a lot of dark, oh, we're gritty and dark stuff, this is the this might be the creepiest thing I can remember happening in, in Metal Gear. I think this is, all of Metal Gear is always very aware of like how dark the child soldier as that aspect is. This is the first game, I would argue, where it condemns it openly, verbally, regularly. Yeah. Right, the, the games are always condemning them because child soldiers are bad and there's no way to look and at that. And this is just, a, this is like a metaphor of what happened to Raiden when he was little, basically, isn't it? You're, you're 
a page ahead of me. Yes, a million percent. <laughs> So, yes, so so uh, horrific. Desperado are taking child orphans and they're taking their brains. Not one to get distracted. Raiden remembers that this is a rescue mission first. So he heads deeper into the lab, trying to find the kids that George told him about. But he does get a little bit distracted with some old security footage that looks interesting. So he rewinds it for a closer look. Oh, no. We see Sundowner on the security footage. Oh, thick lad. Where do you think he has to buy those coats? <laughs> I'm point. sure Desperado, with all their money, has an in-house tailor. <laughs> yeah. So we see Sundowner in a huge trench coat talking to a Desperado's scientist. I don't know the scientist's name. We're not giving it. So just let's just call him Albert. Send us what you have, Sundowner. Albert Wesker? Uh, Albert Einstein. <laughs> because he looks a little bit like Einstein, right? So let's just call him Albert. Send us what you have, Sundowner says. We've already commenced VR training, but we've got some assholes snooping around. Albert is like, it's not that simple. Each brain has its own requirements. Brains are unique. I need more time. And before Sundowner can respond, a thick voice sounds out. All right, you've made your point. The camera pans and we see there's a third man here. Send us what you have now and destroy any unharvested inventory. Should be easy. Last I checked, vagrant children weren't exactly rare in this part of the world. We can get more once we set up a new lab. They lead lives of hunger and pain. We're performing a service for them and the cities they burden. What the hell God is this game? Damn. Yeah, this guy's a baddie. He goes to leave and we see more of his face. Face. Glasses, a massive forehead, and a short, slicked back haircut. Tecumseh is a demanding mistress, he says, and America has suffered long enough. The transmission ends. Ryden calls up his team and is like, Oh my god, that guy, he's United States Senator Stephen Armstrong, and he's the CEO of World Marshall Incorporated. What is World Marshall? The biggest private military company in the world. Oh. So we've got to a point now in politics where... You don't have to stop being, uh, you know, invested in, in private business while also in public office. Yeah, really and also, bad. PMCs hire PMCs. Yes. Like, they subcontract. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes, Desperados is almost being subcontracted by World Marshal. They kind of work together a little bit. Um, I don't actually think I have this in here, so I will fly it to you now. Sundowner mainly works for World Marshal. But it, it, don't worry too much. Just he's yeah, like so the he's, project. He's, he's, he's like the project. He's like the project yeah. lead on nah. the uh, yeah, yeah the. Um, but just yeah, absolutely right. Let's think of it as Desperados were subcontracted contracted by World Marshal because that really is pretty much what's happened. That feels overcomplicated. I yeah. feel like he should have just been the head of Desperado. Yeah. But for for the purposes of this, if we're ever talking about Desperado, we're talking about World Marshal moving forward. They're both the same company for argument's sake. Chase, you, you know this ga this game franchise's currency oh. is names of organizations. You can't just have two. <laughs> So, so Ryan is like, oh my god, Senator Stephen Armstrong, and he's the CEO of World Marshall Incorporated, the biggest private military company in the world. What's he doing? As soon as we save these kids, I'm going straight to World Marshall's headquarters to confront him, because he is trafficking children. And Kevin Washington is like, no, no, we can't do that. World Marshall is in Colorado. Colorado is in America. And America has nice. these things called laws. You can't just cut up World Marshall staff on US soil. We will all get arrested. So apparently nowhere else in the world has laws prohibiting cutting people. Only America. Only America. Um, yeah, but so, so yeah, Kevin Marshall's like, you can't do that. We will all get arrested. Don't go in there. Start attacking senators, Ryden. All right. You need to take a breath. Also, Denver police in Colorado have been privatized and they're basically made up of world marshal employees now. So you're going to get arrested like that. And if you don't get arrested, they're just going to shoot you dead in the street. Courtney Collins cuts in. So Kevin Washington's like, don't go to world marshal. Just focus on the mission. We'll talk when you get back. And Courtney Collins cuts in and is like, whoa, whoa, Ryden, right now we are bigger fish. We can't, we can't find George. He has gone missing. No! So the wee orphan he left back in the sewer, he's disappeared. So Ryden tears on ahead to finish the mission first, and he eventually finds the other orphans, George's friends. Oh, they've not all been made into... But when, no, not yet. But when he gets there, the kids are locked in a cell, filling with poison gas. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, Ryden goes to break the cell open, but oh no, Albert, Albert, the desperado scientist. Albert. Albert, the desperado scientist arrives with George at gunpoint. So Albert is like, break the glass and I blow his brains out. So we've got a bit of a trolley problem right now. Oh, straight up. Yeah, he's like, look, if you if you put your katana through that to save those orphans, I'm going to shoot your little friend. And the, the 
The needs of the many or the needs of the few decide. What do you believe in, Ryden? Yeah, Does the to... scientist say that? Yeah. Comes back again and again. Wind your neck in, man. Honestly. So, You're George... a side character. <laughs> yeah, straight up. He's... I hear, like, at this time, he needs a Legend of Zelda spin attack where he cuts the scientist in half. Well, I was going to say, there's no, way, there's, there's no way that a katana could ever be faster than a gun, right? <laughs> so Wee George is like, Ryden, don't worry about me. Save them. Oh, what are we legend? Ryden looks at George and says... Are you sure? George is like, I'm ready. My life doesn't mean much, but if I can take this asshole to hell with me, it'll be worth it. Ryden laughs. laughs. That's all I needed to hear. And starts to walk towards Albert. Monty, mister, I'm not going to do this voice the whole podcast. I like My voice so, hurts. Hang on, hang on. He starts to walk towards Albert, not the glass. Not the glass. Yeah. And as he does... George pulls away and Ryden strikes down with his sword. Albert falls to the ground, split in half, and we cut to black. My ideals are, I hate Gosh, the many because God. this child amused me. Wow, we don't know what, what happened. Yep. Surely the poison gas, like a, a half second would have been fine. Half second to cut him down, well, then quickly jab yeah, him. Sorry, yeah, no, sorry, sorry to, to, to explain the... I don't think I made that very clear. The point of George being like, don't worry about me, was... Kill this guy, then break the glass. Yeah. If I get shot, it doesn't matter. And Ryan's like, are you sure? And he goes, yeah. So Ryan goes and attacks Albert, and we cut to black. Oh, I thought he was saying save the children. Oh, yes, he also he saves the well, children. Yeah. But the, the, the kill this guy, then break the glass. And he does, he, that's what he does. He kills this Albert. This guy weighed up black. his options terribly, this mm. Albert guy. Mm. He went 0 for 2. It was just dreadful. He thought, at least I'll get one. He assumed that he wouldn't have a psychotic cyborg ninja who doesn't really give a shit. Well, he knew uh, enough about him to, to query his philosophical backstory. He also had a lot of patience to, you know, listen to the child at his gunpoint. Good point. So I want to flag that everything we've covered so far um, is maybe three hours worth of game tops. Oh, it is okay. this is the fast. This is the, the fastest we've ever Six gone. Hours. We got oh, stuck. It's your favorite kind. Short and sweet. This yeah. is this is very much possibly one of the biggest points of contention whenever I talk to Monty about a game. Is I really like games that are like minimum forty hours, and Monty's like, I will happily well, pay sixty quid it. for a ten hour game. God damn it, Chase! You're gonna love my episodes. Oh <laughs> thank God. Well, see, I love Red Dead. Um, oh, Red see, I've not great. I've not actually played Red Dead, but that's more because I think Cowboys are boring. Part five. The memes. We haven't had them yet. Oh, you've had them, but they're about to become core. So, you ready? Yes. Raiden and Blade Wolf are back in the supercar, driving along the highway into Denver, Colorado. This is my favorite buddy cop duo, is Raiden and Blade Wolf. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit, it's a, the modern Turner and Hooch, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I haven't really cut out any key golden Blade Wolf moments that are coming. Uh, don't, I haven't cut any fun Blade Wolf stuff. So just Blade want to clarify. Um, so, a news broadcast plays on his dashboard telling us that the US president, President Hamilton, is on his way... Yes. <laughs> yes. President Hamilton is on his way to the Middle East for a scheduled visit with Pakistani President Farouk Salam. The meeting is viewed as an attempt by the US to strengthen relations amid a surge of anti-American sentiment in the region. It's for background, um, because I didn't really go into this, Metal Gear Solid, Pakistan was a rising power in the Metal Gear Solid universe. They, they are. Yeah. It's 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 imagine imagine Iran, I guess, that they're the Iran of the Metal Gear Solid universe. Okay? Okay. So it's important that, that there's there's peace talks. So Enough politics, though, because there's a call on the comms, and it's George! He's got some bandages on him because Ryden cut him with his blade when he sliced through Albert. <laughs> but he's doing quite good, he's does, okay. Does George work from Africa now? Uh, George? Ryden managed to rescue him and his friends and brought them back to Maverick HQ. And where, now Maverick has child soldiers? Where Doctor saved Albert's... Sorry, not didn't save Albert's life. Screw Albert, Albert's dead. Uh, but he saved George's life by giving him cyborg parts. Uh. Yeah, whoopsie. Ryden closes his eyes as George hangs up. He still harbors serious guilt for putting George in harm's way. He's still trying to fight back the beast inside to keep Jack the Ripper down. But he doesn't have long to think about it because Denver police suddenly attack him. Oh no! Ryden rams him off the road and as he does, Boris rings Wait, in. Did he go to Colorado? That's where so he, he did the out. exact thing he was told not to do? Yes. You're about to find out why. So I mean, presumably to go to World Thingy headquarters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So Boris calls him as he's, he ran some police off the road and he's on his way into Denver to go to World Marshal HQ and he gets a call from Boris. He's, he's Mr. Popular, right? So Boris holds up a letter and is like, what is this? You've resigned? And Ryan's like, oh. yeah. And Ryan's like, nah, man, it's done. I'm on my way to World Marshal HQ now. Can't have a Maverick employee involved in a little corporate raiding, can we? They're warping the brains of war orphans into little soldiers with VR training, like what happened to me. We can't have any more Jack the Rippers. Boris is like, God damn it, fine. Well, officially, I accept your resignation and condemn your actions, air quotes. Unofficially, I'll do all I can over the codec to help. Doctor is on his way to provide air support just in case. So Doctor is like, OMG brains, can't wait to get my hands on more brains. This is so cool. Also, <laughs> have a less evil doctor in your crew. <laughs> uh, he's like, also, I'm totally here to help war-torn orphans, lol. Um, but he's just, he just thinks the brain stuff's really cool and he just wants to learn more about it. So Denver police trash the supercar and Ryden and Blade will fight their way through the city, eventually arriving in the shopping district. Blade Wolf is like, Right, World Marshal's north of here. Do not be distracted by the advertisements. You are not here as a tourist. Blade Wolf on the comms is one of my favorite things in this game so far. He kind of gives. He's kind of giving Yu-Gi-Oh card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, the codec calls do kind of look like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, so he's, he's like, don't get distracted by the advertisements. You're not here as a tourist. And Raiden's like, sure, I'll just buy a quick souvenir for Rose and that'll be it. And Wolf is like, Raiden, we must hurry. And Raiden is like, remind me to teach you about sarcasm sometime. To which Blade Wolf replies, I understand your attempts at humor. I simply do not find them entertaining. <laughs> and he <Jesus>. hangs up. <laughs> so some fighting later and Raiden is stopped in his tracks by a familiar face. Jetstream Sam. Our boy! Transmitting on every possible billboard in the district. Oh, I thought um, somebody had made a statue of him. No, that is a hologram billboard, and there's other billboards at the side that you can't see right now. You walk through the shopping district while he speaks to you from screens. Do they all say buildings. Denver? Uh, some of them do, yeah. But the majority of them look like Jetstream Sam. They just need to remind people where they are. Of course. <laughs> just in case. Um, so... He's transmitting on every possible billboard in the district. He's like, seriously now, Raiden, isn't this all a bit much? Any decent lunatic would have quit after Mexico. I heard you chopped up old Albert. Old habits die hard. A eh, Jack? Ah, but you're a man on a mission, aren't you? Gonna fix everything. Just you and your little sword there. Solve everything with violence. Is that it? And Raiden's like, bro, my sword is a means to an end. I protect the innocent. Shut up. And Sam laughs, transmitting into a massive hologram. All those cyborgs you've killed up until now. Maybe they weren't kids, but they were people. You ever think about that when you're shopping them up into hamburgers? Sure, they're adults. Sure, they signed up for this joining a PMC. But many of them were out of work, starving in the street. In this way of war, how else would you provide for your family when your country's embroiled in civil war? Pumped full of nanomachines and sent into the blender. Your blender. Listen, those battlefield emotions your nanomachines suppress... Listen to them. I know everybody loves Kojima. Mm. This is better than anything he's ever written. I agree. <gasps> I love Metal Gear Solid wow. Tonight 4. Kojima can sit down. There's something about the villain monologues in this that there's there's really something quite special about is it. it now, I do want to flag that Kojima was the... He did give them the overview of the story um, and stuff, but Kojima really took... Is it, is it because this is the game that starts to address some of those things in Metal Gear that are uncomfortable and that are... You know, it starts to really make a point. Yeah, I think... So, so to, to, it's a minor plug, right? But I've got a Batman Arkham Asylum critique that just came out. And in that, one of the problems I have with that game is that the subtext condemns the asylum and the treatment of the mentally ill, but the text doesn't. Batman never really condemns it. It's the same thing with Metal Gear Solid. The yeah. subtext condemns yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. it's so heavy that it's like, it's impossible to miss that it's so obvious that the game is but condemned it never, so But much. it never says it. I, Solid Snake... I mean, Solid Snake does go like, I can't believe you're doing this thing, but this is like, this is the point of this story, yeah. almost. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, I, again, I love Metal Gear Solid. I think I prefer that franchise to Revengeance, but that's because there's so many games. Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of the greatest games ever made, you know, but, yeah, anyway, sorry, so, Jetstream Sam is basically like, you've been killing people, and you make, you make yourself out to be this moral of justice, but you've got nanomachines in you, like we all do, which suppress your emotions when Battlefield kicks in. Start listening to what you sh what 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 they're saying as you kill them, because you, we don't get that up to this point. And despite himself, as a troop of enemies approach, Ryzen 
listens. And what he hears are the voices as he cuts them down. Mm. Voices saying, I watched my wife and son die. This is all I have left. Goddamn IED took my leg. I needed a job. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I've never, I've nearly saved enough to bring mama to the States. They tricked me. When the war was over, they just threw me away to this. Why am I here working for people like this? And those voices make ride and break down. He defeats them just barely. Blade Wolf tries to console him. He's like, don't listen to Jetstream Sam. He's behaving weird. He's acting outside of established parameters. And then he reveals, Blade Wolf, that he and Jetstream Sam have worked together on previous missions. Bear in mind, Blade Wolf used to work for Desperado. He knows Jetstream Sam. Could have shared this information earlier. So Ryan's having like a wee breakdown after hearing like these men scream for their lives and, and the reasons why they became soldiers. And he, he consoles himself for a second and he looks at Blade Wolf and he says, You think highly of him. I have always found him dependable up until now, replies Wolf. Raiden staggers to the plaza outside World Marshal Headquarters, and because of his vulnerable emotional state, he struggles to fight. A couple of guards ambush him, and he has a hard time of it. His attacks are sluggish, and you're playing all of this. Um, Jetstream Sam approaches, saying, I know, I know. Is your cause just, or is that just what you tell yourself? But before Raiden can compose himself, as rain falls, a new face enters the ring. Do we ever get what Sam's yeah, motivation is? We're getting there. This is Monsoon. I don't know why he's giving me, I can't for the life of me remember his name, but from MG2, I think. Whoever the boss was that you had to like plug the second controller in. Psychomantis. He's giving me Psychomantis. <laughs> you know that this organization have a high budget because he's got the new PlayStation VR headset on. <laughs> So Monsoon, um, he's he's all about his magnets. His body can split apart the joint, and Ooh. yeah, yeah, it's it's quite a cool concept. But uh, so how do you slice that up? Well, exactly, exactly, right. And that is the problem with his boss fight. That's the difficulty the player faces with the boss fight. It's very cool. You need to slice him in the opposite direction. Yeah. Off his planes. But we're not in boss fight territory yet. First of all, he's got a good old fashioned villain monologue for Yay. us. So tell me, Monsoon says, and again, this is what he sounds like. Who saves the weak from the men who saves the weak? Kill or be killed, Jack. My time as a war orphan taught me that. Yes, I too grew up on the battlefield. War is a cruel parent, but an effective teacher. Its final lesson is carved deep into my psyche, that this world and all its people are diseased. Free will is a myth. Religion is a joke. We are all pawns controlled by something greater. All right, Joker. Memes, the DNA of the soul. Ah! Hot the memes. damn. <laughs> well then. They shape our will. They are the culture. They are everything we pass on. Expose someone to anger long enough, they will learn to hate. They become a carrier. Envy, greed, despair, all memes, all passed along. He pulls up his pant leg and shows off his long dog tattoo. What does, what does he mean? Right, so, so this is what he means. I'm sure he means like the actual definition of meme and not yeah. the current modern yeah, cultural yeah, yeah, definition yeah, yeah, yeah. of meme. Yes, one million percent. So for a little bit of context, this is actually quite interesting and Kojima has looked at memes before back in Metal Gear Solid 2, but no one has ever really sta made a statement like that. <laughs> memes, the DNA of the soul, right? It's about... It's memetics. It's yeah. it's uh, uh, Richard Dawkins coined the term, right? You know. no, no matter what you think of Dawkins, it's it's actually a really interesting concept. It's cultural psychology, really. Um, so, for example, um, uh, oh, guys, this, this is a pretty poor example, right? But in America, right, land of the free, home of the brave, freedom, freedom, capital F, freedom. That's something that every American, to my knowledge, grows up with. Like this is the ultimate. Good. This is the ultimate virtue that we all should live under. Yeah. Which and whether yeah, and I agree with yeah. that. I don't think it's a bad thing. But that's that's mimetic. Everybody believes that because the culture believes that, and it's reinforcement and reinforcement and reinforcement. So, for example, in a world like Metal Gear Solid, where the world is more about the war economy and war and profiteering war and PMCs and things, it's all mimetic. People just go with it. The think about toilets. The you know? psychosphere. Yeah. It's like I mean, it is it's as simple as like, why do we wear clothes? You know, literally, why do we walk around wearing clothes? Because they're cozy. Well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. If you take away the, the warmth aspect, but it's a case of like, you know, you can't be nude, you know, uh, you've got the naturalists and things, but you can't be nude, you must wear clothes, you must conceal. That's mimetic. So it's all those sort of things that he's talking about here. And the point he's making to Jack is like, it's it's it goes back to the, 
It's, it's war, you know. We were all made from war, so memetically we are born from war, and we have nothing else to live for, Jack. War, war, war. That's my ideal. That's what he believes. Mm. Right? So he's, he's pushing that. So Jack, after this big meme monologue, Jack responds saying, How about full of shit? Is that a meme? But Monsoon does continue. Um, you can't fight nature, Jack. Sam tells me you see your weapon as a tool, something that saves lives, a means of justice. Now there's a pretty meme, exquisite. It's spared you the burden of all the lives you've taken, absolved you the guilt of it. That is, until the illusion broke. Don't be ashamed, it's only nature running its course. You have no choices to make, nothing to answer for. He pulls out his scythes, he's got two little like scythes, but something on Raiden's face makes him stop. You're right, Raiden says. About me, I mean. I knew something was off. After the Patriots, I thought I could walk off the battlefield and into a normal life, but here I am, surrounded by death, arguing philosophy with terrorists. I told myself this was about justice, about protecting the weak, but I was wrong. I learned young the killing felt good, really good. In America, my friends, my family, they helped me forget the devil inside, but who am I kidding? I was born to kill. I guess I just needed something to keep the Ripper in check when I was knee deep in the bodies. But this has been a wake up call to what I really believe, to what I really am. Seems like these guys effed up by deciding to awake the Ripper within Raiden. That seems like a mistake to me. It feels like he's much more likely to kill, you know? Yeah. What are you saying? Monsoon asks. And Raiden, no, Jack's eyes glow red. Oh, my. I'm saying Jack is bad. Oh, Spot on. Awesome. So, yeah, and absolutely, and we're talking heavy metal kicks in. It's like, and he's like, yeah, right? And uh, so, yeah, one of the guards storm forwards and stabs Jack in the gut. But Jack the Ripper... So does he go for, by Jack from now on? Yes. Okay, now. so he stops calling Ryan. Uh, well, Ryan's well, dead. Well, no, for now, Ryan's dead. Look, just, so so the, 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 a guard steps forward. He needs and, to reconcile them. So he, he steps for, a guard steps forward, a random guard steps forward and stabs Jack in the gut. But Jack just laughs. Doctor, he says, and his voice is like very deep and gravelly. Before he was like, hey, I'm Jack. And I was like, hey, I'm Jack. Like, it, I can't do it. He's right. Batman. Yeah, it's straight up. He does like a Batman voice. Uh, so he's like, Doctor, he says, turn off my pain inhibitors. <sighs> Out of fear. Takes his gloves off. Out of fear, Doctor does as he says. I misjudged you, says Monsoon. You are like us, after all. <laughs> now you're just being nasty, Jack replies, and he laughs. A little too long, but I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. And the electric guitar like soars and he gets bigger and cue a boss fight with Monsoon. This game? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I hate this game. I will be buying it the second I get <laughs> home. <laughs> Jack the Ripper is kind of like a mode that you can activate at certain points now. Uh, Basically, it makes all the attacks. So it's his, it's his Kratos faster. mode? Pretty much, yeah. It makes him stronger, makes him faster. It makes his armor like shine red and stuff. It just makes him... I'd like more. to point out to anyone listening along as well that all the sort of RGB lighting that piped his suit is now red. Yeah, it is. Oh, because he's a gamer. Yeah, so the worst kind of person. <laughs> this is a great boss. It is an absolute pain in the ass if you haven't learned to parry yet, which hopefully you have by this point because it's pretty. Oh deep. no, it's a Dark Souls game. Uh, not quite. It's 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 yeah. It's it's actually quite lenient in its parry mechanics, but it's very good. So Raiden slash Jack, but I'm gonna go back to calling him Raiden for now. Right, glows red the entire battle. Blood steams off of him as you slice away at Monsoon in the rain. I love how Monsoon is labeled the Destroyee. Mm. <laughs> That's so camp. I love it. But eventually, Monsoon messes up. He uses his magnetic powers to hurl a metal pillar at us, and we run up the side of it, all in gameplay, ending with us ripping Monsoon to shreds. His final words are kill or be killed. Don't be ashamed, Raiden growls. It's just nature running its course. Your memes end here. <laughs> oh, they're only beginning, Raiden. No, Monsoon says. I passed one to you. Sure as the sun will rise, the slaughter will continue. Memes are forever. Pretty much. Like, and that's, that's very much Monsoon's So, so Monso was Monsoon's goal here to activate Jack the Ripper? Because again, that seems like no. a terrible... Do you think Monsoon... Well, well, he said I succeeded in my goal. I passed on my meme to you. Sure you did. And it 
it, it went terribly for oh, you. It's like if I'm going to die, at least I get this little thing before I die. It's quite cool that I activated Jack the Ripper. That's my success. You know. Do you think Monsoon has a TikTok? No, I don't think he does. I think he, he got. I think. I think. I think he got banned along with Andrew Tate. I completely agree. Yeah, Monsoon strikes me as the sort of guy that would get banned off platforms. That's um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's like, "Oh, the slaughter is going to continue." You're absolutely right. What Neil said. Like, I've passed it on to you. I've now activated Jack the Ripper. Um, and with the glory of battle ebbing away and Monsoon's corpse just lying there, Raiden starts to calm himself. Kevin pops up on comms and is like, "Raiden, are you okay?" And Ryan's like, I'm fine, relax, I'm better now. Just had to get that out of my system. And as he hangs up the phone, we fade to black, and that is the end of chapter three. Mm. It's like one of those rage rooms. He just had to get it out. Mm. He's fine now. And, of course, Mon- Monsoon was just, you know, some random junk in the room. Mm. It was a vase to be <laughs> smashed. Next part. I've titled this Sundowner, baby. Oh, no. Um, with his killer instinct ebbing away, Raiden is super ashamed of his behavior as Jack the Ripper. If you call up any of your friends on the codec, he'll basically apologize for how he acted, and he tries to assure them that he's got Jack the Ripper back under control. He can just activate it whenever he likes and recall it as he seems fit now. He wasn't able to do that before. Yeah, exactly. It's a power-up. You can use it whenever you like. So honestly, they're all like, yeah, sure, man, it's cool. We know what we signed up for working with you. It's grand. We don't really care. Um, But Doctor is like, should I turn your pain inhibitors back on? And Raiden is like, hell no, stop asking. Just help me take care of these orphan brains when I bring them back. I'm out here breaking my balls. You're the, <laughs> you're the science guy. You go science. I'm the killing guy. Let me kill the bad guys, right? Uh, he fights his way up through the headquarters. Eventually, reach. this is a really short chapter. I'm not going to walk you through each battle. It's a long, like, it's like 30 minutes of fighting up through each level of the headquarters, my right? Like the raid. Like a, yeah, like the raid, yeah. Um, so Go fights- watch the raid, everyone. That's a good movie. Shadow <laughs> Legends. No. We've not got that sponsorship yet. <laughs> we don't want it. <laughs> I've been offered it. I've turned them down. <laughs> so no. He fights his way up through the headquarters, eventually reaching the top floor, the room where World Marshal are keeping the brains. And just like before, it's disturbing as hell. Rows and rows, columns and columns of brains, all that remains of war orphans, refugees, plugged into God. VR war training. At this point, he's not even trying to hide it. Oh, straight up, yeah. Like, it's, just, it's just here. This is the room. This is the important room. Um, so they're plugged into VR war training, preparing them mentally, psychologically, emotionally for warfare. God, I thought Kingdom Hearts did depressing things to children. This mm. is worse. Shh. We hear Sundowner's voice echo across the room. Shh. We need to shh in a southern accent. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like and subscribe, everyone. <coughs> this is what you get. So, shh, we hear Sundowner's voice echo across the room. Don't disrupt, don't no. disrupt, don't disrupt the students while the class is in session. I believe you're familiar with the lesson plan. It's the same regimen you went through in Liberia. Of course, so bear in mind, you know, 10 people execute them on the 10th birthday, right. kill this person, etc., etc. Of course, running it in the real world got a bit too complicated, but doing it virtually, no muss, no fuss. They enjoy it too. For every kill, we give their pleasure centers a nice little jolt. And they even get a shiny new body as a graduation present. Can I get a dopamine uh, system implanted into my brain? Well, for every kill you make? No, just in general. <laughs> Just like pre- yeah. press a button. Yeah. I wonder what that would be like. Can you imagine if like you you had that and you could activate what gave you it? Well, we do have that, but we we obviously we can't activate it. It's mm. just. Um, but can you imagine like you know? For, for, mine for, doesn't work very well. But for day jobs and things, right? You know, oh, I put this number in a spreadsheet. Boom. <laughs> that would get you through the day, but then it would be abused. Well, that's how people. That's put like people gamifying their work, don't they? That mm. they some people could only work by gamifying it because it gives them little. The little reward thing that you get from games. It's I only work through gamifying work. Legitimately, I'm not kidding. Uh, that is how I operate. Is how I. How much work. XP did you get for making this lore dump? Uh, <laughs> did you level up? The XP. The, the XP is the views. He it's gained, depre- he gained two, two levels. It's depressing to know I've hit my level cap at 28. <laughs> so. Yeah, so basically Sundowner explains the plan, right? They're going to take these brains, they're going to make loads of child soldiers, they're going to activate them to basically make an army of Jack the Rippers. And that's bad and cruel and horrible to children. So Raiden is like, They're kids, you son of a bitch! Kids are cruel, Sundowner replies. Adults too, they just forget the older they get, thinking they know right from wrong. War crime this, code of conduct that, load of old hooey. Kids though, 
Kids you can mould make them commit all kinds of atrocities, and there's nothing like an atrocity to keep a war going. You just don't get it. In a lot of countries, the guys in charge are long gone now. It's civil war as far as the eye can see, and we've got offices around the world, one for every country. See, the Patriots, they just managed the war economy. They didn't invent it. Not every battle in history is part of some big old conspiracy. War's just a part of who we are. Why fight it? So that's Sundowner's ideal. Mm. And to be fair, 30% of what he says is right. You know, the, the whole child orphan thing and, you know, let's keep keep it going thing is a problem. But, you know, he's not wrong. Um, he is wrong. He is wrong. Yeah, well, he's, he's pretty wrong. Yeah. Well, he's spitting some, some facts here. I'm just what, saying. like? Well, the fact that not every war is some big old conspiracy. It's not all the patriots, etc. It's like well, sometimes yeah. a war is a war. Well, I suppose, yes, he's Even correct in saying that not every war in history was run by a fictional organization <laughs> the Patriots. But, but also, and this is where it gets, like, deep philosophical and stuff, but, like, he's arguing that it's, like, it's just a part of the human condition. And did I would argue that I, I, my belief is that it is, and it is our responsibility to fight that every day, right? So, yeah, so yeah. yeah. yeah the mind. point he's saying is just give into it. If, if this is just the way we're made, yeah. why not just be the way we're made? Yeah. And why not profit off of that, is his argument. And I don't believe that. Fucking bit. capitalists. Yes. Yeah. And then, so, so so he's not done though. So Sundowner then leans forwards and he goes, anyway, nothing's going to matter in three hours. Demand for private military companies is about to skyrocket. Like the good old days after 9-11. <laughs> I didn't add that. <laughs> that is in the game. <laughs> But don't worry about that, you're literally too late. Even at Mach 2, you wouldn't make it. So, follow me up to the roof, and we'll settle this without damaging the merchandise. Like I said, kids are cruel, Jack, and I'm very in touch with my inner child. I've, I've, I've finally recovered from the stunned silence. I would just like to ask, when was this game made? Uh, I don't know, actually. 2009, I'm gonna guess, that 10, accurate, maybe yeah. later. Xbox 360, PS3 era. <sighs> And I also like to, I, li I, soon, I like, I would, argue. I would like the optimism, I admire the optimism of this game to assume that in 2018, when this game is set, the PMC repercussions of 9-11 aren't still happening, which yeah. they are in real life. So Sundowner says, like I said, kids are cruel, Jack, and I'm very in touch with my inner child. Let's go up to the roof and have our fight to the death. And Jack falls into the roof. He's like, sure, man. And the guitar kicks in. Do you think they were on the elevator together going up to the roof? No, Sundowner leaves. No, again. they were climbing the big ladder. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sundowner straight up leaves and catches the elevator first. And there is a moment where Ryan needs to wait for it to come back down. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Do you think Sundowner squeezed in the game of Marvel Snap while he was waiting for him? <laughs> Um, I, I think Sundowner is more of a Genshin type of guy. <laughs> so, cue our boss fight. Um, so, again, guitar kicks in. I'll show you all of these as we have pizza during our break. But the gimmick with Sundowner is that he has shields that absorb our strikes. So, and you cannot use blade mode on the shields. So, you need to weaken him to open up chances to destroy the shields with blade mode. You have to attack, like, the sides of them to cut them off nice. to actually do some damage. It's a really cool fight. Um, might actually be my... Second favorite fight in the game, I'd say. I'm assuming after Sam. Sam is my favorite. Yeah. I think Sam is the least interesting, but Sam is the best. Uh, just for the moment. But what about Blade Wolf? Uh, Blade Wolf is fine as a, best, as a fight. Best fight in the game. Uh, best so, boy in the game. Best boy. So once we beat him, right, so we beat him, uh, and then he has a second phase, no shields, where he kicks you off of the building and you need to hijack a flying exo. So you've got, you've got enemies in the game that have wingsuits, basically, that fly around. They're just, they're aerial enemies. You need to hijack one to fly all the way back up to him while fighting other winged exosuits trying to kill you. And then you meet him in the air and you chop him up. Sorry, Chase, continue. The biggest thing that I'm getting out of all of these fights, mm. Platinum does their boss fights and their spectacle fights so well. And also, having and, the, having, all, and also, I was going to say, none of this is in cutscene as well. No. This is all game. And none of it is a QTE like, chase. That's the key thing. Like, you have a transition, and then you're just doing the same actions you were before. That's the point. All of it is feeling very Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It all feels so... Like, even down to, like, Blade Time is clearly just a knockoff of Witch Time. So, um, yeah, so, so it's a really cool fight. You know, you, you, so he's on the wing, so he flies in the air, he chops him up. Uh, but I know what you're wondering, because you've wondered it with every boss, haven't you? Whether you've thought it in here... Or you said it into the mics. What are Sundowner's final words, guys? What happens in three hours? I just love killing. <laughs> so he says, "Let's go to war." Yeah. So, so remember, his whole thing was basically like, you know, you, you know, doesn't matter if you kill me, you're too late. Physically, you cannot make it to the location to stop what's about to happen. So he says, he's dying, and he says, "He'll launch Operation Tecumseh." 
But I've already said too much. I have a call to make. And we hear his final words, which aren't to us. He calls Jetstream Sam. And he says, he's good. Too good. You knew this would happen, didn't you? Well, you'll get your wish. It's up to you now, Sam. And he hangs up and dies. So anything that could rival 9-11 can't be good. And it sounds like whenever Operation Tecumseh is, it ha it's happening about 4,500 miles away. So not on American soil. If it's going to spike demand for PMCs, it's going to be a political hotspot. Somewhere that would draw in a superpower. Boris and Kevin call us up and Raiden has a light bulb moment. He's a smart guy. The president. He is currently on his way to Pakistan. Senator Armstrong oh, is no. going to assassinate the president. I really like Kevin's sunglasses. Uh, he's, he's, got the, like... he's got the techie sunglasses. The caption has one of them saying, The War on Terror Part 2. Straight up, that is, that is Kevin. Kevin says, The War on Terror Part 2. And you're like, oh yeah, well, this is exactly what's about to happen here. Um, so, yeah, so... It's miles away, but Ryan re realizes that it must be happening in Pakistan and that Senator Armstrong, the guy with the big forehead and the glasses, his plan is to kill the president because that's going to spark a new war, war. So Boris is freaking out a little bit. He's like, oh, damn it. And he's like, we'll never make it in time. Even with a fighter jet, we wouldn't even be close. We're not going to make it to Pakistan in three hours. But Courtney has an idea. Spills her coffee. Spills her coffee and then she has an idea. We don't need a jet. We need an RLV, a reusable launch vehicle, basically a oh rocket. Oh my goodness. Is Ryden going to get fired out of a cannon like a circus? Of <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. No, no. Um, Courtney, however, knows someone just a half hour away that has an RLV able to hit Mach 23. It's Solid Snake. No. No Solid Snake Wait. in this game. Oh. Part seven. Next part. I need your bike. <laughs> so Doctor arrives in that air support that he promised far too late, but he's here. And Raiden boards the chopper, preparing to fly over to where this mysterious RLV is waiting for them. So he's going to get in the RLV and go to Pakistan. Doctor is, is it a yeah. Metal Gear? It's not a Metal Gear. No. no. Sorry. Are no. there any other Metal Gears in this yes, game? There okay. Doctor is that what's going to assassinate the president? Mm, you will see what's going to happen. Yeah, so it's going to be Metal Gear. Doctor is like, oh my god, science, I love science, RLVs are so cool, did you know they launched people into space? But Ryan, Ryden is like, pfft, I'm only going as far as the thermosphere, the thing can't even pass the Carmen line. So, <laughs> he's all disappointed. Thanks, scientist, Ryden. <laughs> Good stuff. But oh no, they're interrupted by a couple of World Marshal fighter jets. Doctor launches a couple of rockets, but it does no good. The fighter jets evade them. Raiden knows what he needs to do. He heads towards Sword the door. Time. Sword time. He heads towards the door, but not before Doctor gets a line in. Raiden, have a nice flight. <laughs> Raiden smirks. And people say Germans aren't funny. <laughs> I thought that was Welsh you were doing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's German. He leaps through the air. What is this game? So, so he leaps through the air and lands on top of one of the jets, plugging his sword into it. It's an AI jet. So he plugs it into the motherboard. And Wait, somehow... he's got a USB bit at the end of his sword. Yes, he does. And he plugs it into the motherboard. And then he's steering the jet. Oh, and he... I love this <laughs> game. This riding on top best. of it. This is so good. Right. So it's coming. It's coming. So, so he's steering the jet and he's, he's using it to attack them and stuff and he heads straight for the second jet standing firm on top of his jet he holds a sword up and cuts the second jet in half nice. just straight through it slow motion he tries to leap back into the chopper barely missing decapitation by rotor but fumbles and falls to his death but don't worry He's riding, badass ninja man. He didn't die, he just took a nasty tumble, which means he'll need to transport to the RLV by road. He can't fly there anymore. Luckily, there is a nearby chopper motorcycle so he can arrive in style. The camera pans over as he rides off into the distance and we see that he was kind enough to leave a thank you note. It reads, I need your bike, thank you for your cooperation, and I'm guessing that's his phone number. <laughs> that is amazing. I begrudge this game none of this sometimes you hate a franchise for trying to be cool for cool's sake i love this it's so good right it's just and it's so self-aware it knows yeah. i appreciate that he left his number though yeah He's like, i was ready to critique this for wasting time but he used blade time and slowed down time and this took 0.5 <laughs> seconds so uh, that brings us to the end of part seven i'm telling you they're, they're short now part eight son of sam mm. 
So we have Raiden driving up the highway <laughs> on his sick new ride. Nothing but one ninja, one bike in the open road. And there's one more obstacle in his way. This better be a real bloody fast RLV. If he's wasting his time with a motorcycle uh, he needs and to get, Sam. Well, we know that he needs to get there in three hours. He knows that it's a 30 minute ride away and he's about to be held up a little bit. So he's going to, yeah. So oh no. Yeah, so that's... It can hit Mach 23, Chase. Mach 23, Whatever of course. that is. I don't. I, I have no idea. I have no idea how that translates to speed. If you know, please do drop it in the comments below. I would love to find out. Wait, so, what is that, 23 times the speed of sound, I think? I guess. It's very fast. That's... I'm pretty sure that's going to hit the speed of light, so... Uh, Not so... quite, but yeah, that's... Yeah. So he runs into an obstacle while he's riding along on his sick motorcycle, and it's Blade Wolf. Blade Wolf stands for a moment with Jetstream Sam before approaching his new master, Raiden. Wolf tells us that he's analysed Sam's words and actions, but is unable to ascertain his motivation. I suppose I should thank you for not killing everyone at the launch site, Raiden says. Sam laughs. Well, not if you say it like that. And before we go any further, it is time for me to be the worst and flash you over to the game's DLC. What? We're flashing over to the, C the DLC. Metal Gear Rising had two pieces of DLC that okay. launched alongside it where you played as Blade Wolf and then, the other, and then in the other piece of DLC you played as Jetstream Sam. I am not going to cover I the can't Blade imagine Wolf. playing as Blade Wolf feels very good. It feels fine. Does it feel like playing as Wolf Link in Twilight Princess? They both feel the same way that playing Metal Gear Rising Revengeance plays, just the animations are a bit different, okay. kind of. Blade Wolf has some cool fun. It doesn't matter, right? So I'm not going to be covering the Blade Wolf. Did you say they released at the same time? No, it came out afterwards. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. Um, so the Blade Wolf, what, normally we do this in order of release. Uh, I'm playing around with it because honestly, I'm not finishing this story and then telling you a little bit. This is going to take me two seconds, a little vignette about okay. Sam. It's not worth it. So I'm not covering the Blade Wolf DLC because honestly, not much happens. It is mainly VR missions while he wrestles with the concept of freedom. It doesn't add much, but I do want to take you through jet streams. But it has Blade Wolf, so it adds a sh It does, but ton. there's not much going on. And it's like literally 20 minutes long. You find out, okay, in the Blade Wolf DLC, you find out that um, he worked for Jetstream Sam and he also worked for Mistress Mistral. And basically he does the whole thing and then at the end of it his memory gets wiped. So it's like, okay, and it's not that interesting, it's not even that tragic, it's just, it's, the, the concept of him having his memory wiped is sad, but you know that happens to him already. So we're focusing on Jetstream Sam, prequel time, let's flash back. So we start about two years before the start of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance at a Japanese garden inside World Marshal Headquarters. This is really cool and you're not going to get to see all of it. You do fight through this as Raiden as you're working your way up to the headquarters. Um, it's like blossom trees and lakes and bridges and little houses. Um, I think Japanese people have a term for their style of houses. I forget the name. I might be wrong. Monsoon is meeting with a familiar face, Senator Stephen Armstrong. Armstrong snorts at the cherry blossoms around the garden. He's like, yuck, uh, pink. Pink's for girls. I'm not a girl. I'm big and strong. And Monsoon's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, straight up. But this is pretty much how the conversation goes. And Monsoon's like, dude, it's just a tree. Calm down. Anyway, let's just chill out. Minwano should be close. Minwano. And he's oh. like, that guy has men in the name. I like him. <laughs> so Armstrong is like, ah, yes, Minwano, the cool Brazilian wind, a.k.a. Jetstream Sam. So there you go. Uh, Jetstream oh. Sam is Brazilian. We cut to a Denver street, where we see Sam pull up on a familiar looking motorcycle. Wait, so he's, he's oh, cool Brazilian that's the is... same motorbike that Raiden took. Yes, so Chase, yes, you're absolutely right. Jeffrey Sam is the cool Brazilian wind. And yes, Neil, absolutely, this is the exact same motorcycle Why? that Raiden is. It just seems to happen that through pure coincidence, Michael, uh, Michael. So, so Jeffrey Sam Jeff left Sam. his motorbike just in the middle of de in, in the middle of a city somewhere. I, guess so. I was also going to point out the fact that absolutely ripping off what's her names. French wind name? At 100%. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, she's like the cool breeze of France or something, and he's the cool Brazilian wind. Anyway, I want to so meet the drizzle of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you. <laughs> so he gets off a, a motorcycle. Um, also, uh, note that he's not got the red arm here. Uh, he opens the sewer grate and prepares to get in, but some pesky street cops interrupt him. They're like, you look dumb with your exosuit. Why are you sniffing around sewer grates? Uh, what's that weird-looking sword you've got? And Sam smiles and says... This? 
and pushes the button on his sheath that pops his katana out. It, ro- <laughs> it rockets out, cracks one of the, cho- the the cops in the chin and launches him into the... I mean, he flies away. He's gone. Um, with a flash, Sam slices the two officers in half and jumps into the sewers. While he's down there, he's suddenly attacked by... Blade Wolf! Blade Wolf! He's like, state your business here, why are you in the sewer? And Sam says something very interesting in response. Oh, you know... I protect the innocent. No. He says, oh, you know, sharpening my skills, wandering the earth, dispensing justice, but only to those who deserve it. Oh, he's he's doing a riding. Such as outlaws or desperados. Blade Wolf is like, you mean world marshal, my masters. So I was like, huh, you're right. This sewer does lead to World Marshal HQ. Isn't that a coincidence? That's where I'm headed. Maybe you should buzz off, stop obeying orders, start thinking for yourself. Blade Wolf's having none of it though, so cue boss fight. Uh, Sam defeats Blade Wolf and he's like, hey, you're pretty good. Sharpen up your skills and maybe we'll meet again. And he rushes on to World Marshal HQ. So he's here to take down World Marshal. He's not working for them. He wants to take them down. Fighting his way to the top, he meets Monsoon. Who's like, damn, you're impressive, but we've been expecting you, Sam. They say you took on a drug cartel back in Brazil, all by yourself. For the first time ever, Sam's face twists into anger. He's like, I was out for revenge for my father, and I got it. And now I'm here for all of you. Monsoon is like, ah, yes, your father, the samurai, but cut off one head and ten more grow back, and hey, that's like World Marshal. Our outfit is a living thing, with offspring, with influence. We're a meme. (laughs) That is a real thing that he says. I'm just going to have to crack open an adult juice because of that one. (laughs) That's how I'm going to deal with that one. He's like, we're a meme, lol, and he drops a smoke grenade, vanishing. Yes, you are. (laughs) And replaced with the familiar roar of Metal Gear Ray. I wonder, by the time that this game came out, had the current cultural definition of meme been cemented? Probably probably not, right? The Xbox 360 PS3 era? No. Like, I feel like at, at... most that was like when because it was they starting like, they like they like share a meaning a sort of common meaning in a sense right in terms of this is a, a like a oh they do but like it as like specifically a yeah, comedic yeah. humorous thing I jacob geller been, right? to, to give a shout out where it's definitely not needed because he's very successful but jacob geller has a wonderful video on metal gear rising or vengeance and how and why down to like how pop culture works as a concept it landed People who played it loved it. People generally did not play it. It did not sell very well because it's not got Solid Snake in it. And then it disappeared and then it resurfaced yeah. as the memes. It revengeanced. It revengeanced. Yeah, that's very, um, very yeah. interesting, isn't it? And I, would... I didn't play it when it released, you know? I'd like to point out that, Ray, we have not seen a successful Metal Gear in so long mm. that now Ray popped up on screen. I was like, oh, well, Ray's about to get sliced the F up. Uh, yeah, straight up. Cute boss fight. It's a fun fight, but doesn't hold a candle to that one time Raiden flipped it over and cut it in half with his sword. <laughs> so as Metal Gear Ray falls, uh, Sam gets a call. On Solid his... Snake should really turn into a cyborg. They seem like they're much better at dealing with Metal Gears yeah. than he yeah. We do not learn what Solid Snake is up to, if he's even still alive. We don't, he's not... Oh, because he could have died by this point, because he, he was, he was aging, he, and, and he was aging so fast. Yeah, yeah he could, yeah. Uh, but it, it, literally not referenced, and I think that that's just an understanding of maybe there'll be another Metal Gear Solid one day. We don't know. We don't want to mess with the canon. Let's just imagine that's not important right now. And it isn't. He's not in this game. So he gets a call on his comms. Sam kills Metal Gear Ray, and he gets a call from Senator Armstrong. Well done, Sam, but you haven't quite passed the test yet. Coming up to the top floor, it'd be a shame if we didn't meet after all this trouble. You'll notice they're reusing a lot of concepts here. The Metal Gear Ray boss fight, a Blade Wolf boss fight. It's it's really cheaply yeah. put together DLC. Um, so yeah, so he, he goes all the way up. Uh, Sam is like, test? I'm not here for a job. I already have a job. Destroying men like you. Bastards who keep the status quo. Send others to die. All from your cushy corner office. Making it to the roof, Sam comes face to face with Senator Armstrong. Helicopters circle the building. World Marshal soldiers are watching them. Armstrong is all smug. He just says one thing. Good of you to make it. Time for your final interview. He takes a sumo pose hands on his thighs, spreading himself, and crashes a foot into the ground. 
electricity charges blasts from <laughs> under the senator of the United States' foot, shocks all of the helicopters, causing a maelstrom of metal and chopper choppers spinning around. Jetstream Sam thinks this is awesome, man. He starts to clap, like, really hard. Big wide grin on his face, and eventually they fight. As they duel, Sam thinks he's got the upper hand, but Armstrong is strong. So is, is Armstrong a cyborg? What is going on with Armstrong, Chase? Good question. Armstrong is strong. He's too strong. Is he... Armstrong going to be our final boss? He's got strong arms, okay? Armstrong is strong. He's too strong, and he bounces back again and again. Armstrong is like, you don't understand. Organized violence, waging war as a business, we're going to put an end to it all. You haven't even heard me out, man. We've been watching you for a while and could use a man of your talents. Sam does not listen to him. He wields his sword as a tool of justice, of vengeance, of re-vengeance. And, <laughs> and he keeps fighting, but Armstrong beats him back over and over and over. Sam is able to chop off Armstrong's arm. Hooray! But Armstrong returns the favor, slicing off Sam's sword arm with a quick strike. Later to be replaced with a red arm. Uh, he's the first foe in years that's been able to fight back like this. And Which one? Uh, so Sam, it was, Armstrong is the first foe in years that's been able to okay. fight Sam like this. Okay. And it scares Sam. <gasps> he doesn't yet have his reset buttons. It, like, legitimately, Sam is, is is scared by this. It's the best way to describe it. He's frightened by what, what's happening. And he's like, "This I've never experienced that. Does he also have the exact same left eye slash that he gave to Raiden? Are they the same character? Uh, there's there's parallels, uh, purposeful parallels, I'd argue. You've got the ninja versus ninja cyborg versus the samurai. That's the concept, right? The two of them going up against each other. Anyway, so Armstrong picks up the arm that Sam slashed off. Armstrong picks up his own arm and reattaches it. And it's like, see, it's like Monsoon told you. Losing a limb or two won't stop us. The job's yours. Welcome aboard. And Sam, cradling his missing arm, closes his eyes, laughs through gritted teeth, and nods. What? And, yeah. What? And that's it. And he signs Why? Because he's terrified that's of Armstrong. That's so weak. What? Why? He's terrified of Armstrong. He's just taken down a whole cartel and cut through this whole building. And he'd... I, I would have thought someone like that would rather die than... I, I guess I am not even giving how... how you played this and it is like you're getting your ass kicked. And he, he just crumples. Through the fear, the fear is what breaks him. And he joins up with, with Armstrong. And over two years, he is molded into seeing the world the same way that Armstrong does. Wouldn't happen to Raiden. And look, you can, might think that's weak, but that's your explanation for why Sam is the way he is. Mm, okay. So, uh, so this brings us back to present day. Sam feels a lot less threatening after mm. hearing about that DLC. The ninja and the samurai standing on the highway. And also his dog. And also the dog. So, Raiden says, what's this all about, really? You getting a big payout? Sam is like, the war has the big payoff. But it's not about the money, Jack. It's about ideals, but... You don't have ideals! It doesn't matter, he says. But now, we've both heard enough speeches about higher causes. History will decide who's right. Raiden is like, I don't care about who's right. I've got enough cause for killing you. Blade Wolf is stuck between his two masters. He's like, must you really fight? But he already knows the answer. And there, in No Man's Land, Colorado, watched over by the setting sun... Jetstream and Raiden settle this once and for all. Awesome. The fight is fantastic. No gimmicks, no leaping around from skyscrapers or throwing helicopters at each other. None of that. Just two men, the desert, and their swords. You do like a classic. And I want to flag to you some lyrics from Jetstream Sam's song that plays during the fight. It's called The Only Thing I Know For Real. And the lyrics are, Memory's broken, the truth goes unspoken, I've even forgotten my name. I don't know the season or what is the reason I'm standing here holding my blade. As they fight, it's noted that Sam has had hardly any cyborg enhancements. He's wearing the exosuit for the speed and the strength, but aside from his red arm, he's completely human. The battle is over before it begins. Raiden gets a lucky stab in, piercing Sam's heart. He falls to his knees, touches the wound, sees how red it is, how human he is, dying here on the side of the road. He looks up and locks eyes with Blade Wolf, before collapsing. Dead. Blade Wolf looks at him, a beat. Was this outcome even necessary? He asks. Inconclusive. 
Raiden picks up Sam's sword. It's ID locked. He can't access the full power. It's useless. Blade Wolf tells us that Sam inherited it from his father after his murder. He picks it up with his mouth, saying... You can't use a sharp thing? No, it's ID locked. So, like, the, 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 the electricity and everything, like, it's weaker than his. He can wield it, but, like, he's got his own sword, which is better. This, this, the red electricity, the red power and everything, he can't access that. Blade Wolf, uh, yeah, basically explains that this is, it was Sam's father's sword and he took it after he was murdered. I would have um, just cut off his hand. That solves your ID lock issue. Uh, it does, yeah, but when you're wielding it, it needs to imprint on your ID. It doesn't matter. So just, like, it's... graft his hand on. The point is, just the game's just going, you can't use this, okay? He's not going to do <laughs> surgery <laughs> in the desert to put Sam's hand on his He's hand. He's a cyborg. <laughs> yeah, but it's a moment of respect. It's a, diff- it's a different operating system, okay? <laughs> it's a moment of respect that he doesn't oh, do that. Sam's a Mac user, isn't he? <laughs> Normie. So... Yeah, Blade Wolf explains it used to be his dad's, right, before he died and Sam went off on his killing spree for vengeance, etc, etc. But he picks it up with his mouth, saying he'll retain it in the memory of Sam. He's going to carry it off. But before he does, Raiden calmly picks it up and with a single swing, flicks Sam's blood from the blade before respectfully sliding it into a sheath. Rest in peace, Samurai. It's worth pointing out that we've had some backstory with Sam now. He did. He was also instrumental in kidnapping a lot of homeless kids and turning them into like robots. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, he's a baddie. Well, we don't know how much he knew about the orphans and stuff. We just simply don't know. We just know that They're he was just a guy. children, regardless. No, but I mean, he doesn't know like about the children. He, he, did, he didn't know you were. He didn't know that he's not meant to kidnap children. He was. He didn't kidnap any children. He, we didn't see that. We didn't see. There's no conclusive proof that he did that. There's no conclusive proof that Monsoon did that. They might be off doing other missions. Sundowner is the only guy we know that was really in on the child killing thing and the Armstrong thing. Okay. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Is is I think yeah. We look the the game approaches this with reverence, which tells me that the game looks at Sam as just a, a tool that was wielded by Armstrong and a, and a, and a sort of mirror version of Raiden. Uh, uh, is. Well, he was a tool for justice that was warped and corrupted by a monster, by Armstrong. Well, this is what happens when you bring a tool to a sword fight. Mm. Whoa. So, final part. And I wrote Felina. Because I was that. <laughs> Were you watching Breaking, Breaking Bad? Bad at the time, yeah. yeah. But finale, right? Felina. Which, uh, I don't know if you guys know that. Felina's also the, the chemical symbol names for uh, blood, iron, and tears, which yeah. was what everyone said when that episode came out. So anyway, uh, Ryan makes it to the grounds of solar what? space and aeronautics, the launch site of the RLV. This is where he's been trying to get this whole time. Boris tells us he's got barely an hour left. A security This fight with Sam, it slowed him down. A security guard ushers him through and is like... Greetings, sir. I'll call her and let you know you're here. The camera pans over, and we see her. Sunny from Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, no. Yeah, she's not got egg in her face anymore. She's all grown up. Nice. So, it turns out she and Otacon have been working here for a few years together. We don't see Otacon, uh, but Sonny does tell us that he's doing good. He's finally put himself out there, and he's even going on dates. <gasps> good for him. Wait! What about his husband? Uh, they're poly. It's fine. Yeah. So as as long as as long as Snake's okay with it. So <laughs> as as happy as Sunny is to see Raiden, she is way happier to meet Blade Wolf. She thinks he is <laughs> awesome. Uh, remember, she's happy. a little genius. She, she's like she's a little genius and dogs. Look at this girl, right? So she leans down and extends her hand, is like shake, and Blade Wolf shakes, and oh. then Raiden tries it, and he just looks at him. <laughs> <laughs> We see Raiden fizz a little bit. Like, it clearly pisses him off enough to let Jack the Ripper come out. So as we pan away, the r- his armor starts to glow red. And it starts oh, the steam cars to come off. Kid. It's great. So Sunny takes us to the RLV, which is actually something she designed. But time is of the essence. So Raiden and Wolf board the rocket, strap themselves in, and blast off. They fly through the air, reaching Pakistan in record time. He crashes it just outside of a military base. Of course he crashes it. Yeah, oh yeah, straight up. And he's like, wait, am I even in the right place? But Kevin calls him and is like, don't worry, it's only the base big enough with security contracted out to World Marshal. Armstrong is here, and so is whatever the hell Operation Tecumse is. So, we how does he know that? I don't know, Kevin, Kevin looked at his satellite drones or whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter, we were in the right place, that's what's important, right? And literally, Chase, you're about to want to ask a lot of questions, and I'm going to... 
ask that you don't because yeah. <laughs> gonna do it anyway. none of them have answers for I, what's about to happen gonna next do it anyway. <laughs> so it's called content mate <laughs> <laughs> the basis of this goddamn channel i love you thank you um so yeah so infiltrating the base ryden spots something curious so he calls up courtney on the comms the cyborgs i'm fighting here have identification codes for desperado but that shouldn't be the case this is a world marshal base why does armstrong have desperado oh, for cyborgs god's here? sake how do you not know that Ryden? no 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 this is where it gets kind of important right so courtney is like it's an alibi Armstrong has been using Desperado this whole time, removing any evidence that World Marshal were here. Mm. Everyone knows that... So they're the scapegoat. Yes. Everyone Uh. knows... Yeah. So again, Sam, even Sundowner, all of them were scapegoats. Monsoon, Armstrong's been using them this whole time. Everyone knows that Desperado has a contract with the Pakistani rebels, which we didn't know, but we do now, right? That wasn't told to us previously. When Armstrong assassinates the president, he's going to make it look like it's Pakistan's fault. And then there's a distant boom. Raiden races towards the sound to see Blade Wolf. <gasps> lying crumpled and shattered. No, or Popper! In the dirt. Suddenly the ground shifts. It's an earthquake. Something is emerging from the concrete. But no, it's... The biggest goddamn Metal Gear you have ever seen in the series. The Metal Gear to end all Metal Gears. It's Metal Gear Excelsus. It's the size of a skyscraper. Eight legs, bright red like a spider. It's hideous. It is hideous. It looks horrible compared to Ray. Just give us a bigger Ray. So give us, like, Ray many, Mark II. I know we've got it on screen here, but it's always tough to tell with perspective. Mm. How many Rays is this stacked on top of each other? <laughs> Ten uh, Rays? If Twenty you, Rays? If you fused... Six, I think there's six, freedom units. How many football fields? Few six rays together, you've got this this thing. Okay, wow, okay. Right, so it's it's huge. It's the biggest one. Biggest one we've ever seen in the entire And series. hang on, just did we skipped over that. Mm. Um, Blade Wolf is dead. Mm-hmm. Oh. I am skipping over it the same way that the game skips over it. Oh, that sucks. Raiden finds him and is like, oh my god. And Blade Wolf is like, powered down. And Raiden's like... So he doesn't even have a little, little last moment of... Master, I love you. No, he Ryan touches. Honestly, the, this touches is what he gets for not shaking. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't shake. Yeah. Ryan touches the metal and moves on. He, he like a moment of like, like a like a last pet, and he moves on. Well, to be fair, it's an AI. Doctor can probably bring him back. You know, I'll haul him back to the lab. He'll be fine. Maybe it's a fair point. Are you ready? No. This is the end of the game. I think the better question is, are you ready? Uh, I'm excited to finally share this with you. This is what we've been building to the entire Let's do series. It. On top of Metal Gear Excelsis is US Senator Stephen Armstrong, dressed in his Sunday best. He's like, well, if it isn't Saucy Jack, you're just a little too late, as usual, idiot. You think you're here to end our plan? You're not ending it. Do they really say, like, idiot in the way that, like, a Chase, general does? I promise you to my absolute core that every word that comes out of my mouth is real dialogue from the game, oh. and I have paraphrased none of what you're about They're to hear. They're all ten-year-olds! Calling someone an idiot at the end of a sentence is funny. That's a really funny thing to say to someone. Oh. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so you're he right. he steps, he steps out. There. He steps out and he says, You think you're here to end our plan? You're not ending it. You're expanding it. Have you checked the internet lately? Ryden. Haven't you seen the memes? Up on Twitter, motherfucker. (laughs) We're burning that shit down. So Ryden checks Twitter. (laughs) No, he doesn't. He does. He does. Raiden brings up hologram screens and sees hundreds of news websites, Twitter, Instagram, no. Facebook, with headlines like Hamilton assassination attempted in, in Pakistan, terrorists bombard Pakistani airbase, pictures of dead soldiers, the cyborgs Raiden has just cut down in gameplay, <gasps> sold to Fox, CNN, all of them. He's the assassin. Oh. He's the goat. He's the latest goat in a line of skip a goat. World Marshal took satellite photographs of Raiden's attack, sent them to news sites, and claimed an attempted assassination has just happened. Tweets... Meanwhile, the president sat there like, I don't... I'm fine. (laughs) What what, what do they mean? Tweets pop up calling for war. Reddit fan 69 is like, take down Pakistan. Small Willy 42 is like, world war now. (laughs) And Armstrong... That's not actually their names. I don't remember where they are. Armstrong's like... 
Well done, Raiden. Your rampage to me is the spark. The excuse America's been waiting for to start waging a new war. The Patriots, they knew war was good for the economy. Four years later, their legacy lingers on, passed to the people, and Raiden gasps. <gasps> the memes! <laughs> Armstrong continues. They left us their great isms, nationalism, materialism. Give yourself up to the whole. No need to better yourself. You're American, goddammit. You're number one. And when people believe that, which they do, then the only value left is dollar value, the economy. So we'll do whatever it takes to keep it humming along, even war. The pa <laughs> yeah. The Patriots planted the seed. We don't need them around to filter and foster their memes any longer. We're spreading them just fine ourselves. Every American man, woman, and child, we're all sons of the Patriots now! Oh, I'd like to say that this is heavy-handed, but it is just the case. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that when they made this game, they realized that their game about memes would make this many memes? No, they didn't. Straight up, I believe that they didn't. Um, they thought they were being very, very deep. With I guess if, if, if the original Metal Gears had been made 10, 15 years later, they would have been, you know, hmm. gold mines. There's so much in, in those as well, which oh, is... Yeah. Yeah. Hell, I would argue they were some. They were the foundation for a lot of the early internet memes before memes became public consciousness, you know? Hmm. Hey, I'm Otacon, and I'm anime otaku. Like, all that shit. <laughs> it's, it's stuff that you know, you yeah. know, like, before yeah, the memes yeah, yeah. became a thing. So, anyway, so... He continues, because guys, this monologue is three pages long. I'm not done. I've just, I'm just giving it to you all, all right? Because it's perfect. Should we just sit back and let Monty do his thing? Of course not. You can't of it. course we <laughs> should. What kind of a question is that? So Armstrong is like, this war is something we need to jumpstart this economy. This recession. What? Do they ever explain what's wrong, quote unquote, with the economy? Oh, sorry. Yeah, very important. And you're about to hear it. The, there's a global recession following the Patriots falling to nothing. I should have told you that okay. at the start. I'm sorry. He's about to so he it. So he has at least a motivation. Well, I would like to I'll flag. Have, I want to kill You these. don't really learn about the recession until this speech. <laughs> yeah, because you could have built that in world building. You could no, have even had it in... Like... No, even the codec conversations from my memory reference that we're in a recession. This is where you learn the entire... Because it's plot. only slightly racist part of the game. It's only in Mexico where they've got those problems with homelessness and stuff. Let's not reference it with anywhere else. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, to be fair, I guess Central Armstrong does rock up and he's like, oh, countries around the world have many homeless issues, but... Uh, we're I was about to say, Denver all. looked fine. Uh, yeah, but Denver like, looked like you know some sort of futuristic mega city. Uh, yeah, it, it it does, and Denver's also like a fascist military state. So you know, uh, potato potato. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he continues. This war is the something we need to jumpstart this economy. This recession the world has been stuck in since the fall of the Patriots. There you go. Raiden is having none of it, though. He's like, and the military costs? Wasting billions is going to help the economy? <laughs> he's just having, a, like, a, a fiscal debate. Yeah, he's an economist as well. Why is this me debating with my parents? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so Armstrong, Armstrong replies, and he's like, private military companies, arms, manufacturers, they're job creators, Jack. All those workers spending money, paying taxes. Trust me, a little war can work wonders, but you can relax. It's a war on terror. We're not out to kill civilians. Extremists, lawless gangs, cartels, madmen. Of course, that would have to include you. Wouldn't want any eyewitness reports complicating the message. He takes a big draw of... Oh, sorry, smoking a cigar this whole time. <laughs> um, an adult cloud stick. Sorry, an adult, an adult cloud stick. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call them in Star Wars? Death sticks. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a big draw of his, his adult cloud stick. He tosses it and climbs inside Metal Gear Excelsis. Q boss fight. Wasn't he already in it? We're, no, he's he's, he's, sta it. he's standing on top of it at this point, shouting. Jack's on the ground and he's shouting at him for like. Imagine you're on top of a building having like a hey, debate with God. someone on the street. Uh, That's the equivalent of this. Like imagine you're standing on the top of my flat and I'm on the pavement below and you're like, oh. The, the economy is looking pretty bad, bro. Like, but what about the war economy? <laughs> like, that's what this is the equivalent of. Um, so, yeah, so cute boss fight. It's a cool fight. Uh, the whole time... 
<laughs> Sorry, I just noticed the caption for anyone listening along. We've got an image of Raiden sort of ducking out the way of Metal Gear Excelsis and the caption presumably being spoken by the senators. Fear the wrath of the USA. A spot on, and that is also a really good Armstrong, because that is pretty much exactly what he sounds like. So um, he's he's the most generic like military general stereotype. No, he's no, he's a he's a, he's a, he's a generic Republican senator, stereotypical Republican senator. Imagine Republican senator as it's portrayed around the globe outside of America times fifty. That is what Armstrong is. He's not a military commander. It is baffling how this man can pilot this thing, but somehow he can. Does this have nukes? Uh, presumably. Presumably, not important, is what I would say, and we don't find out. All, all you need to know is Raiden is fighting a giant robot spider, and inside it is a US center, okay? <laughs> Sounds like real life. Yeah. So, yeah. it's great, and absolutely, yeah, Armstrong the entire time, like, that's, it's not just this, it's all sorts. The one I wrote down was Fear the Wrath of the USA, but there's so much other weird stuff he says all along those lines. Um, Raiden's sword is too small to really cut into the Metal Gear, uh, so he needs to chop off one of the legs and then uses that as a massive sword to eventually win. He takes off one of the legs and uses that as a giant katana and then chops at it with that, and that's how he wins. That sounds it's like great. some near Automata stuff. Mm. But we're not done. Oh. Hopping on top of the Metal Gear, Raiden prepares to fight Armstrong. Armstrong, this is when it really kicks off. Armstrong charges into Raiden and hits him like a train. It hurts a lot. He picks him up by the head and he's like, I played college ball, you know, and headbutts Raiden. <laughs> Sparks and tiny shards of metal fly off of Raiden's face. Raiden's like, sure, at some cushy Ivy League school. But Armstrong is like, try the University of Texas. Could have gone pro if I hadn't joined the Navy. I'm not one of those <laughs> beltway pansies. I could break the president in two with my bare hands. I and he tosses this. Ryan into the air I like a football. I hate the fact that I have heard conversations nearing this in America. <laughs> like this, this absolutely sounds like dialogue that would have come out of it's the fact that it's Normal like, people. this is a US senator arguing with a ninja on top of a mech, have screaming about his Ivy League school. Yeah. Have you ever watched it. US Congress? This is absolutely <laughs> what they sound like. I'll take, I'll take it. He tosses, so he's like, I can break the present too with my bare hands. He's like screaming about how strong he is and how he went to an Ivy League school. Look at him go. He's so is this literally meant to be, he played football and is now just so buff that he can beat up Cyborg. That's what he says. He's just purely, he's not a cyborg. Chase, Chase, we saw him reattach his arm earlier. There's got to be something else. No. That's the football. That's the power of football. If you play college ball, you could do that too. You can reattach your arms to go so, along with all the concussive disorders you'll have later in life. But only at the University of Texas. That's the only state that teaches you how to play ball by reattaching your arms. So he tosses Ryan into the air like a football, gives him a massive kick. Like Ryan spins, like he's he's in ball shape almost. He's all hunched down. Into Sonic mode. He goes, we get like a slow motion. Ryan looks at the camera, screams at the camera as he then spins back down in ball shape. And as he falls, Armstrong kicks kicks him flying forward. Wow. And as he does this, as his foot connects with Raiden in ball shape, we hear cheers, like from a football field. There's nobody else here. The game just puts some audience like, <laughs> wow, as they put him in with applause and stuff. Wow. Again, such a platinum games fight. Don't question it, it's great, it's amazing. Anyway, Raiden is like Jesus Christ, how are you this strong? You're just a bloody center, you're not a cyborg. He goes in to strike with his sword, but Armstrong catches it. Nice knife, he grunts, and snaps it in half. Oh, he's gotta use another sword now, if only there was another one. So Raiden throws the sword away and he decides he's going to try and take him on with his bare hands. Armstrong throws a punch and Raiden <gasps> catches the punch. Typical politician, Raiden says. Big promises, but all talk. Jumpstart the economy? What a load of bullshit. All you care about is lying in your own pockets. That and your approval ratings. If America's gone to shit, you're just another maggot crawling in the pile. He lays into Armstrong and kicks him back. Armstrong is like, you got me. I do need capital and votes. Wanna know why? Do you wanna know why, Chase? Why? I have a dream! Oh, wow, no. no! Oh, this is gross. <laughs> oh, no. A dream! <laughs> for, anyone, for anyone listening along, Armstrong is holding his fist up in front of his face. 
Oh it's no! The King's oh beat. <laughs> dearie me, that's disgraceful. A dream that one day every person in this nation will control their own destiny. A land of the truly free. A nation of action, not words. Where the law changes to suit the individual, not the other way around. <laughs> where power and justice are back where they belong. In the hands of the people. Where every man is free to think, to act for himself. They headbutt, and we see Armstrong's face turn a deep black metallic, veins bursting out of it. Every word that follows is punctuated by punch after punch as he beats the shit out of Ryden. It's a very weird headbutt. Fuck all these limp dig lawyers and chicken shit bureaucrats. Fuck this 24-7 internet spew of trivia and celebrity bullshit. Fuck American pride. Fuck the media. From its ashes a new America will be born. The weak will be purged. And the strongest will survive. They will make America great again. You don't get it. Do you think Trump's played this game? <laughs> do, you, do you think this is where he got it from? I think it's a, a logic. A it's a lo logical endpoint to like uncheck capitalism and jingoism. To be fair, "Make America Great Again" was well. "Make America Great" was a Reaganism, right? Yeah. 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 So, so great, Trump yeah. stole that from Reagan. Trump wasn't even original enough to steal it from. Yeah, this is twenty thirteen. Yeah. So, this was no, a so, so he's doing a Reagan. He's not doing a Trump. That's the irony of the whole. Well, he's doing it. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying Trump's doing a him. Yeah, yeah, but he's doing a metal gear. Yeah, he's but like this is a this is a, a you could make the case that this is just a, a logical endpoint of this kind of like meme. This the American meme. The American meme. Yeah. The American meme. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. He has he has um he has cruise vibes, right? Although Ted Cruz oh no, oh. Ted Cruz is a little worm. Are you joking? No, yeah, no. I could no, punch the shell. I could be up Ted Cruz. What he says. My no. dad could my dad could be up Ted Cruz's dad. They'll make America great again. You don't get it. I'm using war as a business to get elected as president so I can it. so I can end war as a business. In my new America, people will die and kill for what they believe. Not for money, not for oil. What do you believe in, Jack? Ideals, etc., etc. Wait, 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 what? Wait, what, what's, what's his plan here? His plan is to become take, president. Yeah, yeah, we get that, but he wants to take the money out of war? Yeah. Why? Because he wants to end the war economy. Why? By He's going to use the war because he doesn't like the because war. Because he, he wants you to go to war for what you believe in, he's not for the money. It. Yes, exactly what Chase said. He wants you to go for war to war for what you believe in. He wants, he likes war. War's great. But he doesn't want PMCs just doing it because they're getting paid to do it. He wants to go back to... He wants an ultra version of what we currently have. So he wants to use the war economy as it is right now, kill the president, etc., etc., to end the war economy. He's happy for war to happen, but he just wants people to... Go to war because they believe in their country and they love their country. And, oh my God, my fucking country and nationalism and patriotism and all those nonsense but that's terms. Already, that mean nothing. That's already intrinsic to the war economy not where he can make world. money. Not in, no, not in this world. The war economy does not exist. Patriotism and nationalism do not exist in the war economy. Mm -hmm. The war economy eliminates that. It's pure, it's pure finance. Pure finance, yeah. pure money, pure capitalism. The, okay. the sense of a patriotism and national pride doesn't exist and he wants to bring that back. Does that make sense? Fine, Go. okay. I suppose. I suppose. So, as he's saying this, he stamps on Raiden's chest over and over and over. The fight leaves our boy with each hard crunch. Raiden wheezes and asks, How the hell did you get elected? And Armstrong leans in, I don't write my own speeches. <laughs> That's an amazing thing! Did he write this? <laughs> you should try fighting for something you believe in, Jack. Not for a company or a nation or for anyone else. A beat. And then Raiden says, Ugh. Maybe I was wrong about you. Armstrong is shocked. He's like, am I finally getting through? Ryden sighs. I was wrong. You're not greedy after all. He takes Armstrong's hand as a senator and pulls him in for a hug. And you get a scene with the two of them hugging each other. What? Beat. And then... You're batshit insane! <laughs> Ryan throws him to the ground, tosses him across the top of the Metal Gear, all so we can get this shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? Neil, can you describe this? Yeah, he's he's in a banana pose. So to, yeah. anyone, to anyone listening along, our senator is now... Uh, been thrown across the Metal Gear, and he's on all fours. We've got a shot from behind, so we've managed someone on all fours, but from the arse end, and the senator is looking between his legs, back at Ryden, through the arse, with the tie dangling down. Yep. 
Very way. difficult to catch this. It's only on screen for about three seconds. But this is the picture chase. This is the this is the. Yeah, image. I've never seen that. Oh, I've never is... seen this picture. So, and he, he turns to Ryden and he says, "I'm making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. <laughs> Can't fret over every egg." Raiden is like... That listen. pose makes him look like he's about to lay an egg. Yes, yeah, real. Raiden's like, listen, check your privilege. You've never been poor or hungry. You don't know what it's like to fight and steal and kill just to survive. And now, I'm going to kill you. Aww. So they keep fighting on. Raiden grows more and more tired, wearing out his gears. But it seems like Armstrong is somehow still at peak health. Raiden is shocked. He doesn't understand. We don't understand. And he finally asks the question... Why won't Armstrong die? Armstrong laughs, rips his shirt off to show his bare chest, and we get the iconic line of the game. Nana machine, son! <laughs> never once heard that. Oh, Chase, where have you been? I've never <laughs> seen this ever. I'm so happy you don't know any of this. All right, so, nana machine, son. Uh, so he throws right into the ground and starts pummeling him. We can't watch anymore, so the camera cuts away. It's it's that bad. Like, Ryden is having the shit beaten out of him. And it cuts away to Blade Wolf. Yay! Regaining consciousness, lying next to Jetstream Sand Sword. Regaining consciousness? Turns out he wasn't dead. Wait, such of course he's not, he's a robot! A light... Yep. So he's lying next to Jetstream Sam Sword, a light on the sword bleeps and then turns green. Mmm... Back to Armstrong. He's finished pummeling Raiden and he goes in for the killing blow. He brings his fists down so hard that the impact makes Metal Gear Excelsus literally explode. The entire Metal Gear is gone. It's gone. He punches through. Raiden somehow survives, but Metal Gear Excelsus is it's just a circle of metal and fire as a result. That's really dumb. No, it's not. Screw yes, Metal Gear Excelsus. It's boring. Like, on to the Senator Ninja fight. I mean, sure, cool. But yeah, I know what you mean. This guy's wasted, presumably, Billy. But yes. at the same time, he does presumably want to destroy all evidence of what happened here because, you know. Uh, so a ring of fire blows around the two combatants, Raiden lying in the dirt, Armstrong approaching. Raiden blinks, looks off to the left, and sees Blade Wolf with Sam's sword in his mouth. Begin playback, Wolf says, and we finally get to hear... Jetstream Sam's final words to his old friend. Two years I've been working towards this. And on the last day, Blondie has me doubting the whole thing. We'll leave it up to fate then, shall we, Wolfie? A duel to the death. May the best man win. I cut him down, and that's that. Back to our regularly scheduled international incident. But if he beats me, if I die here, the lock on my blade will disable after a couple of hours. It's up to you, Wolfie. Armstrong looks at Blade Wolf. <laughs> Armstrong looks at Blade Wolf and is like, you think that little sword can save your master? Fine, go on, toss it down. But after I'm done with Jack, you're next. Blade Wolf doesn't miss a beat. He's like, I was not designed to fear termination. He tosses the sword down to Raiden, who catches it. Armstrong, he says. I said my sword was a tool of justice, not used in anger, not used for vengeance. But now, I'm not so sure. And besides, this isn't my sword! <laughs> How good is this? How cool is that? That's awesome. So again, that was going to be the exact words out of his mouth. Oh, but isn't it sick? So again, like, like music kicks in, cute boss fight. Um, so here in this crater, surrounded by pillars of fire, Raiden does something we've always wanted to do. Deep down, punch a politician in the face. A lot. So Armstrong is one hell, I mean, really is one hell of a boss fight. So much more difficult than, than you would anticipate he should be. Really tough. But Jetstream Sam's blade is strong. Strong enough to slice past his nanomachines and eventually, through sweat, blood, toil, and tears, Raiden wins the day, plunging his hand deep into Armstrong's chest and ripping out his thick, black, nanomachine filled heart. On his knees, Armstrong still needs to have the last word. Well done, Jack, he says. You've guaranteed the status quo will go on, for a little while at least. Men will fight for reasons they don't understand because they don't believe in, but at least I'll have a worthy successor <coughs> in you. 
deep inside were kindred spirits. You and I. And United States Senator Armstrong dies. I mean, they're not, are they? We see no indication that they are. It's just the savagery. Yeah, he yeah, just sees the savagery as a, yeah. A few days later, Armstrong was right. Raiden kept the status quo going. War does not break out in the Middle East. We see the Maverick team, Kevin, Courtney, and Doctor, enjoying some pizza and coffee and discussing their future plans. Oh, they're just like us. Yes. Hey. They're establishing a new corporation. They've just been certified for construction and long-term nursing care. A cy- <laughs> Seriously, a cyborg staffing firm. Hooray, non-violent work for the cyborgs. And they're going to look after and train up the orphans they rescued from World Marshall for that same work. George and Blade Wolf are now working at Solus with Sonny. And it seems like George might have a little crush. Ooh. No. George on is Bla- like... Oh, not on Blade Wolf. No, no, oh. no. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Um, George is like, God, I wonder what Ryden's doing. That guy's so cool. And Sonny smiles to herself, remarking how some people might have seen him as a monster, but he saved her life years ago. To her, he'll always be a hero. Oh. Our final shot sees Raiden in an unnamed city on the phone to Boris. Boris is like, World Marshal is looking for a buyer, seeing as you, you know, kicked their ass. And Raiden is like, damn right. And I see private military companies are in demand again, fighting for reasons they don't understand, causes they don't believe in. We see some cyborgs step out of the shadows, ready to attack. So, your mind is made up, Boris says. Sorry, Boris, Raiden says but I'm not coming back. But what will you do in the meantime? Boris asks. Raiden unsheathes his sword, doesn't answer. Looks at the camera, his eyes flash red, and we cut to black as the credits roll. Oh, God damn it, this game never got a sequel! Right? Now, that is it. There's no after credits scene. That is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Now, I would like to flag that... Now, the voice actor Quentin Flynn, who plays Ryan, has been teasing some stuff in the past couple of weeks. He seems like he might be recording some more Ryan dialogue for something. We don't know what it is. Could be a remake, could be of, of an old Metal Gear Solid game, could be, hopefully, a sequel to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Because as far as I'm concerned, I love the old Metal Gear Solid stealth games. I would love for more of this. I, I, and it's got, and you've got to call it recall on revengeance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think, yeah, Chase? You think, I'm Chase? curious. That's it. it legit, that is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is I'm personally my Rising. favorite Metal Gear game. Totally fair. Yeah. By miles. I feel bad about that because I worry that maybe it's because of how I've told it. Because I've, I've done the you style, whereas before I did the... Here's a Wikipedia summary, basically. One day, I will play through the Metal Gears. Mm. One day. one day. I don't believe I, I mean, you. I don't, well, I don't believe well, I, I will legitimately buy this one when I get home. Totally fair. Like, this yeah. one I will buy when I get home. The other ones, I will play one day. And you can know that because I finally, and Monty knows this, finally picked up, um, whatchamacallit, Kojima game over Christmas. Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Um, which we also thought that I'd never play. Which so, you're not very far into, if I remember I mean, rightly. No. <laughs> no, and I'm looking forward to when you eventually put it down, because we will do a Lord Dump on it one day. It's, it is, it will come. Because I know that Neil hasn't played it. So Monty has happened. agreed that if I 100% Death Stranding, that I get to run that Lord Dump. And I'm putting it, I'm putting it out there onto the podcast so that people hold him to that. And I, I, I would like to point out my achievements while we're going around the table. I played the first 45 minutes of the first Kingdom Hearts game. You did? I give this uh, five katana blades out of five. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, seven arms out of an undefined amount. I would also, I would also, uh, like, it's been a little while since we've done a lore dump, right? It was Mm -hmm. last year. And thank you all for your wonderful comments. Yes. And uh, we're we're so touched by a lot of it. And going, that's our pizza here. So we're going to go. So thank you very much for listening, and um, if you want a little tease of what's next, here you go. Neil, what was your favourite part of uh, the tease for next episode? Oh man, I love that bit about Alan Wake. (laughs) (laughs) Great, just ruined it. Love it. Thanks very much for listening. Bye. It's pizza time, baby.